That isn't just the sound of the 2016 Mercedes-Benz C-Class high-strength steel and aluminum frame being formed. It's the sound of conviction. Conviction that created a lighter, quicker, and more efficient C-Class, whose beautiful form commands attention, while its more powerful, fuel-efficient engine demands to be driven. This is what conviction sounds like. Now, discover what it feels like in a 2016 Mercedes-Benz C-Class. Blog Talk Radio. This is True Capitalist Radio. True Capitalist Radio. I am your host, the man they call Ghost. The badass of business. Give him capitalism or give him death. That's it. Period. Broadcasting from his Skylight Office Studios in beautiful downtown Austin, Texas. You sound fruitier than a box of Fruit Loops, for Christ's sake. And now, he'll take it from here. Your host, the prognosticator of prognosticators... The man they call Ghost. Oh, and thank you for tuning in with me to another edition of True Capitalist Radio. And of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. It is episode number 146, 146 episodes of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast. And before we get into anything else, I'd like to urge you and plead with you, please retweet the broadcast, all right? Go to the forums, go to the social networks, go to the blogs, and spread it around like goddamn wildfire. And let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house. Once again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. we got a lot of things to talk about, but uh, one of the first things I want to talk about is the prognosticator of prognosticators strikes again. <laughs> You're goddamn right. I'm striking again, folks. And uh, what do I mean by that? Well, if you take a look at yesterday's markets and how the equities were retracting yesterday and everybody was looking negative they were even looking negative on monday on the global markets the only reason that we didn't see it was because we had labor day in america well lo and behold folks did you take a look at the markets today (laughs) did you take a look at the markets today folks because they are up 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 unbelievably up for christ's sake I mean, and this is what I was saying yesterday. You can look back in the archive, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost is the official website of the True Capitalist Radio Broadcast. If you look at yesterday's uh, radio broadcast, I suggested that this was temporary, that this was just an emotional, impulsive investor community that is a pussy-whipped version of itself, for a lack of a better term, completely reactionary towards news, uh, you know, towards uh, economic data, uh, towards uh, mergers and uh, better than expected earnings or worse than expected earnings. I mean, completely emotionally impulsive. All right. Now, that's what I was saying yesterday. Now, moreover, if you look back into last week's programming, I alluded to the fact that traditionally investors like to say that September is going to be one of those months that uh, usually isn't very good. I mean, traditionally, September is a bad month for investing. Well, if you take a look at last week's broadcast, what did I say? What did I say? I said that September was going to break that tradition. I said that we were going to see some increases in September, that it was going to be non-traditional to the lackadaisical Septembers that traditional investors have known to, you know, accept. And today is a reflection upon that prognostication, folks. (laughs) I told you that September was not going to be your traditional lull along September, that we were going to see some major gains. And let me tell you something. If you would be listening to me, you'd be making some serious goddamn money. I know there's a lot of assholes that just sit here and flap their fat Cheeto-stained fingers on the keyboard, you know, trying to get lulls instead of actually absorbing the material that I'm conveying on this broadcast 
so that they can live lavish, so they can make some goddamn capital, for Christ's sake, instead of sitting over here fruiting up the joint. But once again, the prognosticator of prognosticators strikes again. I mean, I should be the radio of record. Good Lord. I mean, it's good to be right. That's all I got to say. It's good to be right. Let's get to the market, shall we? Of course, we talked about the impulsive retraction yesterday. I, as I said yesterday, it was temporary. Every time you see retractions of this nature, when you see the stock uh, investors leaving the equities markets, that's when you should go in. That is a traditional method of investing. That's what made Warren Buffett a billionaire, is when every time the investors start running away, that's when you should start entertaining plays. And if you would have listened to me yesterday, no matter what you invested in today, no matter what stock that you invested in, it would have been up today. <laughs> And I said this was going to happen. You understand that? I said this was going to happen. Now let's get to the market, shall we? Now, of course, we saw nothing but negative in the equities, but today, nothing but positives, baby. We not only recouped the losses from yesterday, but we made gains today. The Dow Jones Industrials closes out today at 275.56 points on the upside. That's an increase of 2.47% on the day for the Dow Jones Industrials. Closing out at 11,414.90 points for the Dow. Let's go to the S&P. The S&P 500 closes up on the upside, 33.38 points. A percentage increase of 2.86% on the day. Closing out the S&P at 1,198.62 points. I mean, are you seeing this? Nothing but increases, baby. <laughs> and once again, the most volatile of markets, I'm talking about the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ, which comprises the crux of the tech stocks available out here to the public. And as I've always said, if you are entertaining investment plays in the NASDAQ, uh, be very keenly observant. This is a very volatile market. I mean, when it's up, it's up. And when it's down, boy, it is down. And you folks know what I'm talking about, you avid listeners out there who are actually making money on some of the things that I'm suggesting on this broadcast once again, the NASDAQ, one of the most volatile markets out here, it is up 75.11 points, a percentage increase of 3.04% on the day for the NASDAQ, closing out the day at 2,584.94 points for the NASDAQ. So let me tell you, major gains in the equities markets, baby. Major gains. If you would have just entertained, baby, if you would have just entertained what I was saying yesterday. When everybody was leaving the market, I was advising folks who are listening to the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, it's time for you to go in. It's time for you to invest. It's time for you to start entertaining opportunities. And if you would have entertained any investment opportunity today, you would have made some serious freaking money. You would have made some serious freaking money. So don't sit over here cry. Don't sit over there with your feelings hurt. It's your fault that you're not prospering, all right? It's your fault that you're sitting on your fat ass, you know, guzzling down food like a freaking garbage disposal and just sitting there withering away, becoming a waste of human flesh, uh, nothing more than a piss and shit factory. It's your fault, all right? Because I'm shooting pearls to you, idiots, and you just fail to comprehend it and let it absorb in your head so you can start entertaining some of these plays and, and financial opportunities that I'm basically serving you when it's on a silver platter. I mean, good God. Anyway, let's continue going, shall we? <laughs> I mean, making money, baby, that's what I do. <laughs> anyway, let me go to the footsie, to the, uh, my brethren across the pond over there, footsie 100 is also increased today. The FTSE is up 161.75 points, a percentage increase of 3.14% on the day. You hear that for the FTSE? 3.14% on the day, closing out the FTSE at 5,318.59 points. I'm telling you, if you'd have just invested in equities today, you'd be making some money. I told you it is. Anyway, let's get to commodities, shall we? Now, commodities... Just another thing that I was suggesting. The prognosticator, a prognosticator strikes again. What was I saying? I was saying that right now would be a good opportunity for commodities plays for a variety of different reasons. We're seeing, obviously, atmospheric disturbances. They're, you know, destroying crops. We're seeing floods. We're seeing droughts. We're seeing fires. And obviously, that is going to have an effect on the supply of certain commodities. Moreover, I also alluded to the fact that 
these hurricanes have actually damaged a few of these gasoline refineries in America, which is going to unfortunately relay on the cost of energy. And as a result, that's exactly what happened today. <laughs> I mean, what's unfortunate, the only thing that tr stayed traditional to investing was the decreases today that we saw in gold. And we're going to get to that in a second. But I think that those uh, decreases in gold are temporary. But let's get, let's get to the other commodities first, shall we? Let's get to energy. we got Brent crude increasing once again today. Brent crude, of course, for all you ass clowns that don't know, it is the oil that's shipped off to Europe and Asia. It is up today. $3.17, a percentage increase of 2.81% on the day, closing out Brent crude at $116.06 excuse me, per barrel of Brent crude oil. Gasoline futures, did you see them spike today? I mean, good God! I told you this was going to happen. It has increased today $28.75, a percentage increase of 3.07% per, uh, on the day. 3.07% on the day for gasoline futures. You know that's going to reflect the price that you're going to pay at the pump here in the next couple of weeks. Let's go to heating oil, shall we? As we see these coal fronts start coming into the north, uh, you know that uh, you know a lot of these investors are speculating that a lot of people are going to need some heating oil. I mean, we're already seeing some cool front out here in Texas, for Christ's sake. Anyway, heating oil is up $6.73, a percentage increase of 2.24% on the day. Natural gas pretty much unchanged on the day today. And WTI. <laughs> I mean, yesterday, I was kind of bewildered at the fact that WTI kind of fell flat yesterday. And I even suggested that at some point... Uh, these refineries that were damaged in the hurricanes is going to reflect on the price of WTI sweet crude. I said this yesterday. I was a little bit perplexed at uh, WTI being flat on yesterday's trading, but today completely different, baby. If you would have shorted this, or if you would have, uh, excuse me, if you would have uh, played some ETFs on this particular play today, you would have made some serious money just on a short-term play. WTI is up $3.73, a percentage increase of 4.34% on the day. Good God, 4.34% on the day. I mean, I was wondering when this was going to happen. Yesterday we saw it come out flat with no kind of gains whatsoever. I mean, I was wondering when the hell we're going to see this crap. You understand? Know I, mean, I was wondering when the hell we're going to see these gains. I mean, we've got refineries down because of the stupid, ridiculous uh, hurricanes that we're having all over the country. So once again, WTI up. Let's get to the agriculture future, shall we? We got canola up two dollars and ninety cents. Cocoa continues to see its slide. It is down thirty-four dollars, a percentage decrease of one point one four percent. Coffee, we saw some major sell-offs yesterday in coffee. Well, the bottom feeders came in and bought back. Coffee is up three dollars and fifty-five cents, a percentage increase of one point two six percent on the day. And corn continues to see its decrease, although. I personally believe that we need more decreases in corn. I'm sick and tired of paying one, two ears of corn for a buck, all right, especially when I'm out here living in Texas, all right? I'm living in Texas. Uh, I mean, I should be paying $1 for nine ears of corn out here, but no, my goddamn government over here has to subsidize this ridiculous cockamamie corn ethanol program, which is nothing more than burning food so we can fuel our goddamn gas guzzlers. It's the most ridiculous, stupid, pathetic, tax-funded concept of all time, and this is why you see such high corn prices. And once again, folks, I hate to keep reiterating this, but when you see high corn prices, that corn price is going to be reflected on everything that uses corn as a component. And you'd be unbelievably surprised at how many things use something called high fructose corn syrup as a substitute for sugar. Yeah. So if you were to, let's say, see the increase of corn happen in the futures market, well, as a result, those increases are going to be relayed in the prices of everything that uses corn as a component. So this is why I make such a big, you know, inference and a big deal about corn price, because it does, all right? It does mean that you need to uh, make way for potential increases in Stuff that's on your grocery store. Jesus Christ. Anyway, where the hell was it? Where am I at, engineer? I lost my place. I'm sorry, we're just getting tired of work. All right. 
Wheat future. Oh, no, I didn't even say the corn price. You didn't, I, I didn't even say the corn price, engineer. All right, we got corn down. $7.75, a percentage decrease of 1.03% on the day. All right, now we, we need to see that corn price to go down even more as far as I'm concerned. Uh, who else we got going on, all right? Who else we got going on? Uh, wheat futures are down $6.50, a percentage decrease of 0.75%. Uh, sugar saw some bottom feeders come in after yesterday's sell-off. Sugar is up $0.12, cents, a percentage increase of 0.42%. On the day, soybeans saw a minor sell-off. It was down a dollar seventy-five, a percentage decrease of 0.12 percent. And good God, <laughs> did anybody see lumber? I mean, has, has anybody seen lumber out here? For Christ's sake, I mean, good God! <laughs> I mean, if you would have listened, all right, when uh, what was it last week or a couple of weeks ago when we we were finally seeing that hurricane that was going to hit. Uh, the East Coast, I was telling everybody that lumber or any kind of hardware play, any type of, uh, uh, I don't know, fix-it-yourself type of home-based uh, retail play, these types of plays were going to be available because you knew that there was going to be destruction as it relates to these atmospheric disturbances that are damaging the East Coast, and not only the East Coast, but we saw Hurricane Lee in the South dump all kinds of floods uh, it's extending itself all the way into the uh, the East Coast once more, and I'm telling you right now, what did I say? What did I say? Huh? I was saying that lumber is going to be in demand, and lumber was going to go up. And let me tell you something. If you would have listened to us about last week or two weeks ago and entertained these lumber investment opportunities, you'd at least be up right now 15 to 20% on your goddamn money, baby. <laughs> Woo! Oh, my God. I'm not joking, folks. Did everybody see lumber today? It is up again. Another 2.82% on the day, an increase of $7.40. Huh? Another 2.82%. We've been talking about 2.8-something percent increases for the past week and a half. You know? Lumber is going up. is up the roof. And I know there's some individuals that are in the true capitalist army. Uh, and that listen to the True Capitalist radio broadcast that entertain these plays, and I guarantee you, you're making some serious money right now. All right? <laughs> I guarantee you, you're making some serious goddamn money. Isn't that right? Cheers to you. Wait a minute, I don't even have a drink here. I, got, I don't even have my drink. I didn't even have. I didn't even set up a drink for this show, for Christ's sake. I, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this show drinkless. Well, the reason I'm doing it drinkless, folks, is because, man, I mean, I made so much money today, it was unfreaking believable. You know what I'm saying? I mean, as you can see, I, there's a smile on my face. There's a lot more energy going on into the delivery of the markets, for Christ's sake, because I'm just making money. I mean, it's just what I do, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. Everything's great. I tell you, I love, I, I love it. I love it. Keep it coming. Uh, anyway, lumber is up $7.40, a percentage increase of 2.82%. Much props to all those that uh, took advantage of that play. Uh, we got oat selling off today. It is down $5.75, a percentage decrease of 1.57% on the day. We've got soybean oil futures up $0.63, cents, a percentage increase of 1.09%. And it looks like the bull nose, muff diving, carpet muncher bull dykes were out in the wool futures today because wool is up $8, a percentage increase of 0.59% on the day. Now let's get to the metals, shall we? Because this is a this is an important uh, this is an important thing to talk about at this point in time. Let's get to the metals, shall we? Let's get to the metals. Now, once again, folks, we saw some um, some decreases in copper yesterday, and and the reason I said we saw some decreases in copper is whenever these investors see bad economic data, uh, whenever they see anything that they feel is going to curb the amount of demand for certain manufactured goods, uh, that means that not too many people are going to have that big of a demand for copper because copper is a main component to a lot of these appliances, a lot of these manufactured goods out here in America. And if we're going to have any kind of consumer slowdown in the consumption of these particular products, well, by God, I'm telling you right now, it's going to slow down the economy, and then by default it is going to bring down the cost of uh, of copper itself. So once again, copper 
was down yesterday, but since we started seeing a bump in the equities and, a, and, and some decent consumer confidence, not to mention uh, the Federal Reserve uh, you know, stated today in its page book that uh, the economy grew very, very so slightly. So as a result, it seems like the investors in the copper futures came in and bought back some of those bottom-feeding opportunities that were available after yesterday's sell-off. It is up today, $8.40, a percentage increase of 2.07% on the day, baby. All right, that's for copper. All right, erased all of yesterday's uh, losses and uh, also put some gains on today's board, so to speak. Now, let's get to gold. Now, the reason that we're seeing such a sell-off in gold today, folks, is because you, you see a lot of people cash out and parlay those profits that they're making at those high gold levels, 1800 pushing $1,900 a troy ounce gold. They're selling those off, and they're parlaying those profits into the equities markets. Because remember, I mean, equities, you can grow profit based upon bull markets a lot faster than you would holding on uh, to a big, large uh, portion of your portfolio in gold. So this is why you saw a sell-off and a minor retraction today in gold. But once again, I think it is, in my opinion, I think it's very temporary. I think it's temporary because it doesn't seem to me that these governments are going to stop spending. On the contrary, uh, we got the president. He's going to speak this Thursday talking about implementing more stimulus. I mean, he's talking about growing the government, for Christ's sake. And, and this is the last thing we need as it relates to the integrity of our currency. So, in my personal opinion, this is just a minor retraction, and I still think that these are great buying opportunities for anybody who wants to ride that gold bubble, baby. Ride that gold bubble. I'm serious. Ride it, baby. Ride that gold bubble. Ride it, for Christ's sake. Because I am saying that we're going to see 2500 per troy ounce gold until we see a new administration that is going to you know, put its foot down on the fiscal irresponsibility that is conducted by our government. I kid you not. But anyway, gold is down today. And once again, the reason it's down is because people were selling off to parlay some of those profits and putting it into the equities markets. Because, I mean, Jesus Christ, I mean, we were up 230, 230 points today on the Dow. I mean, of course they're selling off and putting it in equities. Good God. Anyway, retraction today in gold, it is down $53 on the negative, a percentage decrease of 2.83% on the day for gold, closing out gold at $1,820.30 per troy ounce of gold. Now let's get to silver, because we saw a, a sell-off yesterday in silver, uh, God knows why. Once again, I, I made a big deal about it because it's this helter-skelter market, this emotionally impulsive, pussy-whipped investment community. Uh, and we saw a sell-off while gold modestly rise yesterday, not to mention that we saw a hell of a volatile market in yesterday's trading for gold. At one point yesterday, we saw gold up about 50 bucks. And, uh, you know, before you know it, that 50 bucks, uh, you know, went down to what? It only increased about a buck 20, a buck 80, something of that nature. I mean, give me a break. So once again, you know, the helter-skelter markets are basically, you know, they're, they're going after this same kind of trend in the metals market. Uh, we've got silver down 19 cents, a percentage decrease of 0.46%, a minor decrease, but still a decrease. Silver still above $40, though. It closes out today at $41.67 per troy ounce of silver. Now let's get to the livestock commodities because once again i had also stipulated because of the mass drought that we're having out here in texas and you know texas is the biggest uh, cattle producer out here in the world and because we're having such a drought out here you know that's going to reflect on the price of live cattle a lot of these live cattle are dropping dead because of lack of water overheat exposure so on and so forth so obviously that was going to have its effect on top of these disgusting wildfires. I mean, we're having these disgusting wildfires out here in Texas that is basically not only burning agriculture, but burning up crop. And that's why I kept saying that commodities are a good play here within the next three to six months as far as I'm concerned, because at some point 
the demand is going to far outweigh the supply because the supply has taken a pretty big dent as it relates to all these atmospheric and natural disaster disturbances, for Christ's sake. So, in essence, folks, uh, this is why you're seeing this is why you're seeing an increase in a lot of agriculture and livestock commodities. Now, let's get to live cattle. Live cattle is up 77 cents, a percentage increase of 0.66%. We've got cattle feeder up 42 cents. That's a percentage increase of 0.32%. All right? And for all you fat, jelly-ass, ham bone assholes that like to shove a couple of ham bones down your goddamn gullet, well, it's going to cost you a little more because lean hogs are up a dollar thirty, a percentage increase of one point six zero percent on the day. I mean, good God for lean hogs, baby! I mean, that's a lot of money for some goddamn ham bones. But you know what that price says to me? Whenever I see increases in ham. It says to me that people are not necessarily going out and buying beef. You know, they're not consuming in uh, steaks and, uh, you know, hamburger meat and that sort of thing. So as a result, they're getting deli ham uh, to offset costs that they're basically cutting from their food budget and allocating it to wherever the hell else they're putting it. You understand? Anyway. Anyway, folks, I want to thank you very much. That is the market for your ass. And once again, folks, I just want to reiterate the prognosticator of prognosticator strikes again. I said last week that September was going to break the tradition. It is. It was not going to be a bad month because traditionally in the equities market, it's a bad month for equities. But uh, as you see today, with the market increased as much as it did, that it is not going to be your traditional September. It is not going to be your traditional September, folks, and I guarantee that uh, we are going to see if not major gains, at least major volatility with the opportunity of those that are day trading or short-term traders. And what I mean by short-term traders, I'm talking about individuals who buy a stock one week and sell it the next week. You, you could still legally do that, believe it or not, without getting messed with by the government. But if you are a day pattern trader, which means that you buy a stock and you sell the stock in the same day, the same hour, the same you know, just, just in the same day, you can actually have your brokerage account frozen because of this disgusting, ridiculous law that needs to be overturned, folks. And this is why we need to make sure that these presidential candidates that are out here in all, that, that are trying to run for office, we need to make sure that they are put on record, that they are willing to overturn this law on day pattern trading. It is against the law, believe it or not, to day pattern trade, which means, hey, I want to buy a stock in the morning and then sell it off in the afternoon so I can make uh, some money on that 25, 30, 30 cents upswing. You know, you can't do that. You can't trade, uh, you can't buy and trade a stock on the same day because it's, a, it's considered a day trade. And because of the new laws and regulations our big brother government is implementing upon us, that is now illegal. And they'll freeze your goddamn brokerage account for that. It's ridiculous. In a day and age where we got 9.1% unemployment, I don't see why individual citizens can't take their, their, their money, whether it's $500, $1,000, $5,000, $10,000, and participate in day pattern trading. I mean, you folks know, just listening to this broadcast, there's a lot of volatility in this market, man. I mean, just take a look at the day chart of any stock. Take a look at the day chart of anything. And just take a look at those choppy waves on that chart, up and down, up and down. I mean, wouldn't you want to participate in that pattern trading? Wouldn't you want to buy that stock in the morning at a low price and then watch it go about 10, 20, 30 cents higher and then sell it off that same day? I mean, don't you want to make that liquid and be able to see that liquid accumulate after making an accumulation of these day trades and then parlaying the liquid that you accumulated from day trading and putting it into long-term investment? I mean, do you understand that's how the game works? But you, as an independent investor, are prohibited from doing that because of this disgusting, ridiculous liberal regime in power today. It's ridiculous. So anyway, I know I go, go off on a tirade about that particular subject matter a lot, but it's important. It's important. I don't see why the independent individual investor 
should not participate in day trade. They should be able to participate. They should be able to gain liquidity. They should be able to make a living if necessary. I mean, some people can legitimately take a thousand bucks and make a freaking living off day trading. I used to know people that did it. But because of this ridiculous, stupid, pathetic law out here, you can't do it anymore unless, unless you have $50,000 in a brokerage account. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only way that you could participate in day trading. And who does that help, huh? Who does that help? Does that help individual investors? No. Does that help the uh, individual working American? No, it doesn't. You know who it helps? It helps these goddamn jerk-offs on Wall Street that have the ability to be able to accumulate 50000 100000 200000 a million, two million dollars so that they can day trade and participate in pattern trading. It's ridiculous. And all I'm saying is that these damn... Presidential nominees need to get rid of this pathetically anal law. And that's all there is to it. Anyway, let's get to another subject matter. I want to talk about tonight's debates. I'm actually looking forward to that. Anybody know about that? The GOP are getting ready to debate tonight in California. Uh, we're going to see all the GOP nominees that are out there running for president that actually want to you know, flex nuts against Obama. Because let me tell you, Obama is suffering from his lowest approval ratings in his presidency. And uh, I kind of want to hear what uh, a lot of these candidates have to say. Now, you folks know from listening to my broadcast, I'm starting to lean towards a little bit of a Mitt Romney in between a little bit of uh, Rick Perry. Uh, but as we know, some of the things that have come out about Rick Perry, him being the cheerleader to Al Gore, it uh, doesn't sit very well. Now, to Rick Perry's defense, he was a good executive out here in Texas. He was able to... Uh, basically leave Texas unscathed as it relates to the 2008 economic retraction and the economic collapse that happened at that particular time. Uh, you know, he was able to continue job growth and continue the uh, continuity of Texas's uh, ability to obtain uh, headquarters, the ability to obtain jobs, uh, corporate America relocating out here to Texas. Uh, he, he's had the ability to make sure that these real estate markets out here in Texas don't collapse at the rate uh, as most of those out there in America are collapsing. It's been it's been a great time out here in Texas. I've made some serious money. All right, I mean, I've made some serious money on real estate out here in Texas. I've made some re serious money by not paying any kind of state income tax. All right, I mean, I, I, I've made some serious money without having to, you know, deal with any kind of unions, for Christ's sake. You know, because we're an at-will work state, all right? There's no freaking unions out here. All right, there's no goddamn Jimmy Hoffa Jr. sitting here waving his finger in, their, in the faces of private enterprise out here. Do you understand? Uh, but anyway, let's get back to the debates. I'm looking forward to them. Are you going to watch them? I mean, are you going to watch them? This is the GOP. We're going to see Mitt Romney, uh, Rick Perry. Uh, we're going to see that uh, you know psychotic face, uh, Michelle Bachman. Uh, we're going to see Ron Paul. Uh, who else are we going to see? We're going to see uh, Palenti, uh, you know, all those other characters that are trying to uh, get the nomination for, for the Republican Party for presidency out here. And I want to hear what you have to say about it. Oh, yeah, that's right. Palenti bowed out. I forgot about that. That just goes to show you how insignificant this piece of trash was actually was, for Christ's sake. I know that he was hollering a bunch of, you know, borderline, you know, Alex Jones and the Fed type nonsense, but it uh, didn't really work for him, obviously. I want to hear what you have to say about it. 646-652-4869. The GOP today, debates are tonight. Uh, you know, I hope they come out swinging because I think they're going to go right after Rick Perry. And if Rick Perry was smart, if he was smart, he'll just completely not go to the debates and say, I got wildfires to take care of out here in Texas. I, I can't afford to leave the wildfires. I'll, I'll attend the next debate. I'll attend the next one. If he was smart, he'd do it, because you know they're all swinging for the fences at this guy. Anyway, let's continue going. I want to hear from you. Are you going to watch the debates? 646-652-4869 is the number to call. Let's take some calls right now, shall we? we got area code uh, 719. Are you going to watch the debates? Oh, yes, I am, because um, what you, any, any uh, knowledge of when it's going to be starting at this specific time? Uh, I believe it's going to be starting 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, uh, but traditionally most debates start about 8 o'clock Central Standard Time. Uh, but I I'm really looking forward to the debates. I mean, I want to see the economic uh, proposals 
that a lot of these Republican nominees need to put forward and whether or not they're going to draw the line in the sand and say, hey, we're not going to embrace any more of this socialist garbage. We're not going to continue to grow government. And that's the rhetoric that Mitt Romney's been saying. He's been saying that growing government is the wrong thing to do, and what we should be doing is helping facilitate an easier business footing so that those in private enterprise can create jobs by investing in research and development, by allowing those that have saved up so many some odd dollars to invest in an entrepreneurial idea. I mean, this is what we need. We need the environment to conduct business, not over-regulation that makes businesses apprehensive of investing. Jesus Christ. And I don't, know, I don't, understand, how, I don't understand why people don't understand this and why it's a hard thing to comprehend, but... Uh, at 719, I think it's going to be at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. You going to listen? You going to watch? Yes, I'll. Yeah. Uh, uh, who, are you gonna, who are you going to vote for? for? Uh, probably, I'm not undecided, undecided. No, I hear you. Uh, I mean, uh, but are you uh, left or right wing of the political uh, perspective? Uh, right. Well, that's good, man, because you should be right-wing of the political perspective, because anything left is doing nothing but selling out the youth of America. You sound like a young man, all right? Unfortunately, anything left is selling out the youth of America by forcing them to continue to pay for Social Security that they're never going to see, by continuing to you know, force them to pay for Medicaid and Medicare that they're never, ever going to see in their life, and we need – leadership that's going to understand this and actually salvage any kind of potential economic opportunity that's left for America today. I mean, that's all there is to it. We do not need any more growth in government, all right? We're already seeing from Europe collapsing from the inside, from its own socialism. It shows that it doesn't work. You cannot produce a civilization of stagnant human beings that produce absolutely nothing but shit and piss and expect civilization to continue itself uh, in its uh, democratic and, uh, you know, living lavish kind of manner, all right? It doesn't work. And all I'm saying is, is we need candidates that are going to be fiscally responsible with our government so that we can start having some goddamn economic productivity going on in this country, so we can have some entrepreneurial-type investment going on in this country, for Christ's sake. And I think that these elections are serious business. And I don't mean to be getting political out here because I could care less who's in the White House I, and I don't care who's in the government, but these leftists are starting to really, you know, take aim for private enterprise. I mean, you know, you heard during the 2008 economic collapse, they wanted to limit the amount of money people made a year. Can you believe that? I bet you ought to remember that. I advertised that on this broadcast. Those assholes. When the, in 2008, when these leftists took control of the government, these assholes were actually seriously considering uh, making a cap, making a cap on how much one can make per year, and making a cap on how much money one can make in their lifetime. I kid you not. I mean, what was the number one could make in their lifetime? Thirty million bucks. That's it. That's what they were proposing back in 2008 when these leftists were trying to hyper-sensationalize uh, the hysteria and trying to push forth legislation, for Christ's sake. Can you believe this crap? Uh, they tried to propose, oh, you, you can only make $30 million in your life, and that's all you can do, okay? That's all we can do. This is just sick. Right, but this is it. Huh? This is the leftists for you right now. They're trying to get rid of private enterprise. You want to know why, folks? Because take a look at who comprises the system of these goddamn bureaucracies. A bunch of paper pusher assholes that are complete failures in the private sector. I mean, just take a look at the left, for instance. Take a look at Rahm Emanuel. Y'all remember that stupid dark-eyed bastard? You remember that stupid, you know, four-foot-eight bastard? Remember him? He was the chief of staff to the White House until he abandoned ship like he usually does on most uh, of his posts, uh, abandoned ship and, uh, you know, gets the hell out of there. But Rahm Emanuel, his whole, his whole claim to fame in the private sector and his only private sector jobs were him working at an Arby's when he was, you know, I don't know, a teenager or something, and he couldn't even do that right because he sliced off his finger trying to slice some, you know, I don't know, a roast beef or something. So if you look at Rahm Emanuel's hand, he's got half a finger because this stupid idiot can't even run a goddamn meat slicer, for Christ's sake. And then secondly, where was his second job after Arby's? Well, 
after he uh, you know, became some big-time bureaucrat within the Illinois infrastructure of bureaucratic politics, well, then Rahm Emanuel decided, well, uh, I've already had enough politics. I'm going to go into the private sector. And some private equity firm, some investment Wall Street firm, gave this schmuck with no kind of experience other than slicing his finger off at Arby's. They gave this idiot, was it, a $1.5 million a year job as some kind of a – uh, managing director of some freaking Wall Street firm. I mean, uh, how, many, how many times does that happen to you as an individual? Uh, you do nothing your whole life except be some career bureaucrat that's paper pushing and, 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 and rhetorical blowharding, and you leave the public sector to go right into the private sector after only having Arby's. Arby's on your resume as private sector experience, you get a $1.5 million managing director job in Wall Street. Huh? Only in America, baby. Only in America. That's why I'm saying these scumbags in Washington that are running the country, they're losers. They are failures in the private sector, and this is why they're trying to take away power from the private sector. This is why they're trying to take prosperity away from the private sector, because the basis of their power is the system. The basis of their power is the growth in government. And we can't allow this to continue happening. And this is why we have to look for an alternative out here. We need a complete and t total change of administration. And that's why I advise everybody right now, right now, to view these GOP debates that are going to happen tonight because we need an alternative here. We don't need another yes, we can, jive, turkey, jive, shuffle, and nonsense, all right? All right, we don't need any more of this jive shuckling and, you know, teleprompter reading and, you know, sounding like uh, Martin Luther King in front of black folk and sounding like an eloquent Harvard grad in front of white folk kind of nonsense anymore. All right? We need somebody who understands economics, who understands that we need that, uh, you know, some kind of economic growth that is pro-business, not anti-business, over-regulation and over-taxation. You understand? Anyway, 646-652-4869 is the number to call here. I want to hear from you. What are you, you going to watch the GOP debate? So I want to hear what you have to say about it. Area code 703, you going to watch the GOP debates? Yeah, actually, no. I am, and to be honest, uh, only this past year I've been getting into the whole government and politics scene, and I'm good in it now. But in 2008, you know, when I didn't know anything really about you know this whole field, I did support Obama, but nowadays I'm le leaning to the right. You know, he's just I just can't stand much more of this, you know, this Social Security thing. You know, that's just some old New Deal stuff that's just, just got to go, what he's trying to do. And hey, you're damn right it's got to go, sir. It's got to go because people like you are paying for it, and you're never going to see it. I mean, you're never going to see Social Security. You're never going to see Medicaid and Medicare, and yet these goddamn baby boomers, you know, you know I'm talking about the baby boomers. Well, those assholes who comprise 77% of America's wealth, they are continuing to force the youth to work in an environment that has no economic opportunity other than service industry-oriented uh, employment opportunities. They are still forcing these children to pay Social Security. I mean, they're still forcing these children to pay Medicaid and Medicare, for Christ's sake, man. I mean, this is the biggest tragedy in world history. You understand? Biggest tragedy in world history. And, and for the baby boomers, I don't understand how you could sleep at night, you milky lickers. All right? I don't understand how you dumb milky licking pieces of finger spanking garbage can sleep at night knowing that you have 77% of America's wealth, and yet you force the children to get... $90,000, $80,000 in college debt, and then when they finally get in the employment market, the best they can do is become a manager of a freaking Applebee's. And then you want them to pay Social Security and Medicaid and Medicare on top of that. It's ridiculous. It's the biggest tragedy of all time, and that's why I do this broadcast in hopes of making young capitalists to not only make money, to, but de to be political. To understand that, hey, I don't want to pay Social Security anymore. I want to keep that money in my pocket. I want to keep that Medicaid and Medicare money in my pocket, for Christ's sake. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll worry about my own Medicaid, Medicare. Do you understand that? I'll worry about my own retirement. I don't need some socialist Ponzi scheme to direct my money where, when I don't need it redirected anywhere. Do you understand? And, and anybody who says that, uh, oh, well, you know, Social Security is one of
one of those voluntary opportunities so that individuals that don't set aside a, a certain number of dollars they can actually be able to continue to sustain the continuity of their lives once they retire so that, you know, they can continue to shut your stinking mouth. It's the biggest Ponzi scheme of all time, and I can't believe that we're continuing to fund it, and I can't believe that the youth of America is sitting on their thumbs thinking that it's still somewhat of a good idea. Anyway, let's take some more calls here. Six four six six five two four eight six nine. We're talking about the GOP debates, and then we're going to move on to another subject matter. Uh, area code eight zero one. What do you think about the GOP debates? Uh, you're taking too long. Uh, we got two one five. What do you think about the GOP debates? Hey, am I on right now? Yeah, you're on. What's up, man? Yeah, I I, I probably just started getting into politics like about a year ago, and I'm kind of pissed at Obama, and uh. I mean, get this stupid kid. Get that stupid eight-year-old brat off. Get him off, for Christ's sake. I mean, this is the children here that are being ripped off by their parents, and they're more worried about making sound clips so they can get some goddamn lulls from some stupid internet social pipeline of cyber vermin, for Christ's sake. That's ridiculous. That's all this is. This is, this is the youth, folks. This is why the goddamn baby boomers are bamboozling the whole goddamn country. I mean, they are basically just selling their children out to the government. They are selling their children to the government, folks. I kid you not. You folks think that maybe I'm uh, falling off my rocker here or I'm going off keister, but that's exactly what these baby boomers have done. They have sold their children to the government, and now they are going to be products of the government. I mean, you know, folks, I mean, I, I sent a tweet out, what was it, about three or four months ago about the Department of Education sending out their SWAT team for a couple of people out there in California who basically aren't paying on their college loans. Yeah, that's right. After 2008, Mr. Yes We Can over here, Barack Obama, federalized and nationalized the college loan program. So if you happen to take out a college loan, you cannot default on that loan. You cannot go bankrupt on that loan. You are obligated on that loan for life. And now, if you're going to try to, you know, pull some scheme by taking the loan and, you know, kind of going incognito underground and then just not paying it and not working or doing whatever kind of scam you think you're doing, well, now the Department of Education has a SWAT team, all right? The Department of Education has a SWAT team, and they're going to go bust down in your home and take you from your house. If you don't believe me, look it up! Look up Department of Education SWAT team and take a look for yourself, all right? I'm not joking. Take a look for yourself. And, and you want to give the baby boomers, the seniors, these assholes that were screaming at Mitt Romney? It's not fair that the rich don't get to pay for Social Security so they can take care of my old ass. It's not fair. I mean, no, 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 no. You know what's not fair is being born into a world. And then being guided by your parents to, oh, you got to go and get an education. You got to go out and get a college degree. You got to go out and work. And meh, meh, meh. You bamboozle the children with this nonsense. And then, by because most of these dumbass baby boomers are bureaucrats anyway, they decide to go ahead and outsource all the jobs in America, which I'm not against outsourcing, but remember, these are the same baby boomers that are claiming that they're Mr. We Are the World, hippies, uh, Mao Zedong, uh, you know, tax the rich, feed the po assholes. And yet they were the ones that outsourced the jobs. They were the ones that uh, made it uh, not only feasible, but uh, economically viable for corporate America to send jobs overseas. I mean, the baby boomers were the ones in charge of this government. They were the ones that made it, uh, I mean, financially attractive for these businesses to do so. Did you know that back uh, when the baby boomers were in power, after, you know, 1988, these idiots allowed not only outsourcing to be done, but they actually gave tax incentives. They gave tax incentives to corporations to do so. 
So, you know, you baby boomer jerk dicks that want to sit over here and claim, oh, you just, you hate old people. You're an ageist. You, are you kidding me? I'm as old as you pieces of prostate-infected crap, all right? But let me tell you something. I can't go to the grave knowing that these children have had their souls sold to the government before they even understand what happened. And that's why I do this broadcast in hopes, in hopes of sparking synapses in the brains of everyone across the world and let them know that they can become capitalist and prosper. Because let me tell you, prospering in today's America is a little bit more difficult for the youth of today because they have so many outgoing expenses that they have to worry about. They're taxed to death. Because they're probably not married, they have no children, so they're taxed 40% on their income if they make over, what is it, 80000 75000 Huh? You make over eighty five, seventy five thousand for Christ's sake, you're taxed 40% of your income, huh? You know, I mean, it's ridiculous, it's stupid, it's pathetic, but hey, who are you paying for when you're taxing? Uh, when they tax your ass, who are they paying for? You're paying for the seniors. Oh, You're paying for the PO in America. Oh. Give me a freaking break, all right? Anyway, these GOP debates are pretty important. I want to see if anybody has anything to say about it. Let's take some more calls here. Area code 405, you going to watch the GOP debates? Hey, what's going on, Ghost? Uh, How's it going? Uh, happy Fruit Bowl Wednesday, I think it is right right now. Yeah, it's Fruit Bowl Wednesday because these guys are probably fruiting up the joint. As you can see, we had some yeah. brony call up with that fruit-ass song. But, yeah, what's going on, man? Oh, not too much, man. It's been... <laughs> Man, I'm try- I'm trying to enjoy this weather, you know, up here in Oklahoma. It's like 60, 90 degrees right now. Yeah, let me tell you, it's been a hot summer. We we're starting to see some of that cool front come down here. We're seeing it in the uh, 80s, at least, 80s, uh, low 90s. I mean, it's been 105, 107, 110 degrees out here in Texas all throughout the summer. So, uh, you know, we're kind of uh, embracing that goddamn 85-degree weather out here. And in the mornings, it's been even more chillier out here, for Christ's sake, 65 yeah. degrees. Yeah, I was at a party last weekend, and I actually had to wear a jacket. So, <laughs> like, that was pretty cool. What? You had um, a what? I had to wear a jacket, which was strange, like, last weekend. So oh, yeah. I was pretty happy yeah, about well. that. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think about these you, GOP uh, debates, man? You think you're going you're gonna to watch them? You, you, you don't care about them? What's up? Uh, it's interesting. I think it's uh, definitely a good time to start looking at the debates and follow along because they're just now starting, right? I mean, they, throw, they all throw their hats in, but, like, we all need to figure out who's going to be the best for the country, and as simple as that. Uh, do you think uh, Obama's done some pretty good job for the country, or do you think he's made it uh, completely ridiculous? Okay, let me tell you my honest opinion. Go for I it. hear people going around saying, oh, Obama's doing great things. He's pulling people out of Afghanistan. Oh, Lord. And then um, they, they're sending my stepdad back like two weeks from now for three months. Oh, man. Yeah, so they're, they're not doing shit. They're still sending people over. Um, other than that, I mean, he kind of had a hard job. I'm going to give him that. Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't say he had a hard job. I mean, you know, uh, hard jobs don't pull out $1 trillion out of thin air like he did for Stimulus Package 2. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he pulled out a $1 trillion to give out basically to the cronies that donated to the campaign contribution accounts of the liberal regime. And that's why, you know, he basically wrote Stimulus Package 2. Instead of helping the so-called people, you know, those leftists, they always talk about, oh, the people, the people, we do it for the people. Well, why in the hell did you bail out Wall Street? Why in the hell did you bail out GE? Why in the hell did you bail out GM? Uh, You know, if you're Mr. Yes, We Can and Mr. People and all this other nonsense. It's ridiculous is what it is. It's utterly sick. Anyway, let me move on to another subject matter. Thanks a lot for calling there, 405, man. I appreciate your commentary. Uh, Let's move on to Obama's job speech tomorrow because, you know, not only is he going to announce that he's going to give tax tax cuts to corporations that hire people for free labor, uh, but he's also going to announce – he's going to announce even more stimulus spending. Can you believe this crap? More stimulus spending is what he's going to continue to do. He's going to print more money. I mean, you watch after he proposes more stimulus, the next day gold is going to shoot up, all right? Once again, another prognostication by ghost. 
If Barack Obama comes out and says, ah, we need more stimulus packages, <laughs> I guarantee we're going to see an increased spike in gold. All right? That's right. He's going to bring out more stimulus. I mean, what do you think fueled the market today? I mean, he released some of the ideas that he's going to put forth. He's going to extend that payroll tax. Uh, he's going to initiate more tax initiatives. He's going to uh, give uh, incentives to those that hire uh, uh, veterans, uh, a part of their firms. Uh, he's going to give tax breaks to those that hire people for free. Believe it or not, this is what the, this is one of the focal points of the president's job speech. All right, he's going to give tax breaks to corporations that hire people for free and work for free for eight to twelve weeks for so-called on-the-job training. Yeah, that's what he's going to do, and that's going to help remedy the economy, all right? Now, my question is this, all right? Let's say a corporation does take a few of these, you know, free labor. It's basically what it is. It's free labor, for Christ's sake, courtesy of Barack Obama. Let's just say that, you know, a corporation takes a few of these people for free labor, 8 to 12 weeks. Now, are those people counted as being employed? Are they counted as being employed, for Christ's sake? Because that's rather curious to me. I mean, I wonder how they're going to cook up these books, you know? I'm just saying. Anyway, I want to hear from you. I mean, are you looking forward to the job speech out here? Are you looking forward for free labor? Free labor. 646-652-4869. Let's, let's take some callers here. Uh, 215, what do you think about Obama's speech? Yeah, nobody nobody cares about your stupid little dog, for Christ's sake. Why don't you shut that stupid little toy poodle up, for Christ's sake. I mean, there's nothing worse I hate in the world. Unless you're a bitch, or excuse me, unless you're a chick, excuse me. That was wrong of me. I'm not a sexist, right? Unless you're a chick, I mean, you shouldn't have a toy dog, all right? You shouldn't be having some freaking, like, you know, a little cocket, what are these, stupid little dog, little miniature schnauzer, a little toy poodles and shit like that. I mean, you shouldn't have dogs like that. If you're a man and you still have somewhat of a sack, I mean, you should be getting a freaking German Shepherd, you know, a Doberman Pinscher, you know, a Rottweiler. You know, that's what you should be getting. That's a stupid little toy dog, Paris Hilton, holding on the side of my boob kind of shit, all right? Excuse my French, but I'm, I'm just disgusted with this dumb toy dog fanaticism that we're seeing in today's America. I'm sick of it. I'm seeing people go into shopping malls with a stupid little dog on their hand like it's some kind of a goddamn fashion assortment of some sort. Enough! These stupid little dogs, man. Sick of them. And then you see them on these court shows, too. You know, they, they sit over there and let their stupid little rat dog... You know, a little rat dog run around the park, and, for Christ's sake, and they're, and they're pissed off that some big-ass dog takes it and just kind of, you know, flips it around with its goddamn jaws or something and then rips its neck off. I mean, get, the, get, the, get those stupid little dumb dogs out of here. I hate little dogs. We should give every little dog to North Korea so they can feed their people. That's what I think. All right? I'm not joking. We should take every small little toy dog... Give it to North Korea so they can feed their people. Do you know that in North Korea, they are eating second harvest? Do you know that? Second harvest. Do you know what second harvest is? That means they're eating their own shit! So all I'm saying is, instead of having all these stupid toy dogs that are, you know, being used as little fashion statements by stupid skankasauruses that are trying to get the high hard one by somebody with money... Why don't you just take all these goddamn dogs, throw them in North Korea so they can eat something, for Christ's sake. All right? I mean, what is it? North and South Korea have been separated for, what, 60, 65 years? And, if you, and, and there's been actual scientific studies about this. The average South Korean is actually four to five inches taller than the average North Korean. And the reason is, is because of their second harvest diet. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I didn't mean to get off on that freaking tirade about dogs, for Christ's sake, but I heard a little... I heard a little crap like that in the background, and I hope the individual that had that little stupid dog in the background yapping, I hope they feel a little bit uh, a little bit apprehensive about themselves, you know? I hope they look in the mirror and ask themselves, what the hell, am I a pussy? You know? I mean, do I smell like sick-ass salmon or something? I mean, what the hell am I doing with a toy dog? Unless, I'm, unless I've got... A pink taco between my legs. You should not have a goddamn toy dog, and that's the end of it. 
Anyway, 646-652-4869 is the number to call. What? 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 Now people are calling me sexist in the chat room. For, well, what? What's so sexist about that? I just don't like toy dogs, man. They're stupid. They're stupid. They're little rodents, man. I don't like them, man. They, they look weird. I mean, uh, enough. Enough of this dog crap. Screw all you assholes that are saying I'm sexist. I am not. All right? I'm trying to protect womanhood. That's what I'm trying to do. And promote manhood. That's what I'm doing. Like old Judge Joe Brown says, I'm protecting womanhood and promoting manhood. That's what the hell I'm doing there, Milky Lickers. And if you don't like it, well, then tough titty, get the hell out of here. Jesus Christ. Anyway, where the hell where the hell are we at, engineer? Oh, Jesus Christ. We're already headed into the second hour. That's right. We're already headed into the second hour of the True Capitalist Radio broadcast, folks. And of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Before we get into anything, I'd like for everybody to please retweet the broadcast, all right? Go to the forums, go to the social networks, go to the blogs, and spread it around like wildfire. And let everybody know that True Capitalist Radio is in effect and in the house, folks. Uh, and before we get into anything else, I mean, do we have any Twitter shout-outs to say there, Engineer? Do we got any Twitter shout-outs? Well, according to him, we got a couple of Twitter shout-outs, so let's go ahead and do it right now, shall we? Uh, let's start from the top. We've got, uh, what is this, Gino Blast. we got Brony News. Oh, great. we got Gunbagbo. Uh, who else we got? we got Mike Extreme, or Mike T. Extreme. What's going on? Uh, we've got Little Roboter. Uh, we got that fruity-ass bastard Dark Razors. Uh, who the hell else do we have out here? Do we got any more, Engineer? We got a couple of more up in here. Uh, who else do we got? We got uh, Rubric Alou. Uh, we've got Greg Ramirez 90. What's going on? Uh, we got Texas Lull. Ah, you son of a bitch. You son of a freaking bitch. Let me tell you something. Do you idiots even have a soul, for Christ's sake? I mean, we're suffering from wildfires out here in Texas. That's nothing to laugh at, assholes. That's nothing to laugh at. I'm not going to let these idiots get to me, for Christ's sake. I'm making serious money today. I'm not going to let these idiots get to me. Let me take a couple of deep breaths. <sighs> the sun is warm. The grass is green. All right, that's enough. I'm 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 better now. I'm not gonna let these idiots get to me for Christ's sake. Any more, engineer? All right, we got. We should feel bad. What's going on? Weed hacks. What's going on? We got herpa derp engineer. Uh, we got evil bronze in the place. Uh, yeah, there's there's flaming nipple chop once again. There you go, that old flaming nipple chop. Uh, who else do we have here? We got uh, Anonymous Plomo. What's going on? We got some idiot named Fudge Pucker, uh, Poop Tickler Jr., British Brian. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm not saying that disgusting name for Christ's sake. Uh, we got Apple Bluff's Ghost. Oh, Jesus Christ, enough with that brony crap. Oh, and right when I say that, we got some asshole named Brony Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm just going to give a couple of more, and then we're going to move on to the next broadcast, or next uh, subject matter, folks, because this is just, you people are sick, twisted sons of bitches, for Christ's sake, all right? I mean, just sick. Um, Isle of Pony, uh, I'm not going to say that crap. We got Moonbase, what's going on? Uh, we got Vet Forum Wars, James Anthony in the place. Uh, who else we got? We got LOL at Ryan Dunn. Uh, that's it. Get that. Get out, for Christ's sake, engineer. I'm not going to say any more shout-outs. If these six sons of bitches are going to do this, I'm not going to say any more, for Christ's sake. That's just that's just wrong, man. That's just, that's just wrong. You assholes. You're just wrong, man. It's just horrible. Anyway... I guess nobody really gives two rat's asses about Barack Obama's speech, so I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next subject matter. And the next subject matter I want to talk about is old Jimmy Hoffa's son, 
Uh, did anybody hear what Jimmy Hoffa's son said recently here? Well, he was in a speech where he was introducing the president. Believe it or not, the president was actually at this speech, all right? And before the president went on and talked to these, uh, you know, basically a congregation of union jerk dicks, uh, James Hoffa, which is Jimmy Hoffa's son, which is the biggest, one of the biggest union leaders out here in America, was out there in front of this goddamn crowd of people, basically talking a bunch of violent rhetorical rhetoric. Do you understand? I mean, this is a union leader talking violent rhetoric. Now, I know there's a lot of leftists out there that are in the talking head media that are trying to downplay Jimmy Hoffa's uh, violent rhetoric. But lest we forget that his father, all right, Jimmy Hoffa, was a disgusting, despicable, corrupt piece of shit. Excuse my French, all right? I mean, for you folks that don't remember, Jimmy Hoffa was the union leader of the 60s that not only uh, utilized his power as union leader to basically extort capital out of private enterprise, but this asshole actually had the audacity to do deals with the mob. I mean, he did so many deals with the mob that Jimmy Hoffa Sr., you know, in the 60s, the mafia finally got tired of this stupid asshole thinking that he could flex nuts at everybody, that the mafia actually took a hold of this guy, kidnapped him, and he was never seen from again. The story goes that Jimmy Hoffa was actually put in a, uh, in a block of cement that's actually on, I think it's the left side of Detroit's, uh, Detroit Lions Stadium, whatever the hell it is. I mean, they actually call it the Jimmy Hoffa side of the stadium, all right? I kid you not, they actually put this idiot in a block of cement and they put him in a goddamn uh, the, the, the football arena in Detroit. Well, now he's got his son, his stupid-ass son. Hey, have you all heard his son recently? He's a freaking lispy bastard, all right? He's a lispy little bastard, for Christ's sake. I'm just going to go ahead and play a little bit of what he was saying uh, at this little speech that Barack Obama was speaking. This was before Barack Obama took stage. I want you to listen to the violent rhetoric to the disgusting union mob mentality that's being implemented by James Hoffa in this speech, for Christ's sake. Listen to this disrespectful piece of trash. Listen to him. And the president, what, he's, in, he's embracing this crap, huh? Is the left wing embracing this type of violent rhetoric? Hey, engineer, put that lispy bastard James Hoffa on, for Christ's sake. Put it on, for Christ's sake. The people is, we like a good fight. And you know what? They got a war. They got a war with us. And there's only going to be one winner. It's going to be the workers of Michigan and America. We're going to win that war. All the way. But it starts with your involvement. It starts with next November. We've got a bunch of people there that don't want the president to succeed. And they're called the Tea Party. The people that don't want him to do anything right. And he's working hard for us. And President Obama is frustrated by what's going on. Well, guess what? We got the vote. And the answer to what we say is, we remember in November we will beat the Tea Party and give this country back to workers and America. We can do it together. And we've also got to talk about jobs. I get so tired about people who send these big corporations that send our jobs to Mexico, they send our jobs to China, and they have the audacity to say, where are the jobs? Well, I got news for you. It's time to bring those jobs back to America and put America back to work. That's what we've got to do. We're going to hear from President Obama in a few minutes, and I'm so glad that he has come to Michigan because this is where he sees the real America. He looks out on this army of people, and you know what I say? President Obama, this is your army. We are ready to march. And President Obama, we want one thing. Jobs, 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 jobs. That's what we're going to tell him. He's going to be, and when he sees what we're doing here, he will be inspired. But he needs help. And you know what? Everybody here has got to vote. If we go back and we keep the eye on the prize, let's take these son of a bitches out and give America back to America where we belong. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. All right. Shut that asshole up. Shut him up, engineer. Shut his ass up, for Christ's sake. Shut that lispy bastard up. Now, did everybody hear that right there? Now, that was a uh, leader of the unions out here in America, for Christ's sake, basically saying that uh, we need to take those sons of bitches out. Now, what the hell does that mean, take those sons of bitches out, huh? This is your own personal army. You know, that's what he was saying, Bill Ball. This is your own personal army. I mean, could you get any more leftist, socialist, communist, Marxist than this garbage here? I mean, good God, the stench of Marxism smells so much I could smell the corpse of Mao Zedong, for Christ's sake. I mean, good Lord. I want to hear what you have to say about this. I mean, are you condoning this? Are you leftists out there condoning this kind of violent rhetoric? Are you condoning this type of activity? I want to hear from you. 646-652-4869, this number to call here. I want to see if there are actual supporters of Jimmy Hoffa Jr., for Christ's sake. What do we got here? 267, you're on the horn. You you, you agree with this violent rhetoric? I'm going to have to keep reiterating this, all right? Let me tell you something. I am a... Shut up. Shut up, you audio splicer. I'm not even going to give you the time of day. All right? I'm talking about the violent language of Jimmy Hoffa over here. He's trying to bring the spirit of his father... In this election, for Christ's sake, I mean, does everybody remember what happened to his father? (laughs) His father was a corrupt piece of crap, all right? His father was a goddamn corrupt piece of trash, for Christ's sake, that did deals with the mob. And what, this guy's supposed to be the savior of the workers of the world, for Christ's sake? B.S. Let's take some more calls. 817, what do you got to say? Hey, Ghost, how are you today? How's it going? Um, I'm just going to say that um, I'm a capitalist, and uh, I pretty much agree with everything you say, pretty much, except I'm a Christian, and I believe in God, but um, going back to the, um, to the, uh, re- to the, um, the new Republican election that's going to happen next year, um, I, I really personally think that, um, that we need a we need a leader that um not only loves God but wants to make America a better place. And well, no, I, I agree with making a be- uh, America a better place, but I don't think that the leader has to love God. I mean, you know, that's one of the biggest misconceptions of all time. Now, no, don't get me wrong. I mean, if you believe in the Christianity and you know the the Book of Fables. I mean, hey, that's your prerogative, but uh, I, I think that in today's modern society, in, in the day and age of modernity, people need to realize that they no longer need to embrace these old primitive concepts of theology. I mean, these old primitive concepts of theology were used by institutions like the church to subjugate mankind for thousands upon thousands of years until the scientific revolution and the uh, the inquiry of people like Descartes and Galileo and Newton, uh, these individuals basically contradicted the institution of the church, which inevitably led to their demise. I, I don't believe that just because uh, you know somebody believes in God, that, that doesn't mean that they're holy. Uh, I, I don't believe that somebody who preaches piety necessarily you know gives them carte blanche to be holier than thou. I mean, I think it was Nietzsche who said that those that actually do things for good virtue actually have a premeditative idea in their heads. They have motives that go beyond the comprehension of those that can see the actual goodness being put forth by this individual. And I believe that. I believe anybody who attempts to think that they're doing something good obviously have a secondary motive. And, you know, in my personal opinion, we saw this in a variety of different people that thought that they were the the higher-than-thou theocratic uh, leader in a variety of different instances throughout history. And lo and behold, the more pious they are, the more theocratic they are, it seems to be the more destructive, the more divisive, the more murderous they are. So uh, I have to disagree with you, sir. I don't believe that uh, you know we need somebody who has to believe in God as our leader. I, I don't believe that whatsoever. And I know there's a lot of individuals out there that wish that they could pray to God and 
and and when they pray that you know their team is going to win the game, you know they're praying to God for more money in their bank account. They're praying to God for this and that. But you know, you notice God doesn't let anybody. Uh, he doesn't let anybody win. All right. You want to know why? Because you, as an individual, have to take the initiative to carve out your own destiny in this realm. It's not up to God. God isn't going to sit over here and give you money. God is not going to sit over here and give you the game. It's up to you as an individual, as a conscious soul, to carve out your own destiny in this realm, for Christ's sake. And that's what people just don't seem to understand. They just want to exist. Most people just want to exist, and they don't mind if they are serfs to the state. So as long as they get their entitlement, so as long as they get their food, so as long as they get their housing, they don't mind being just utter waste of human life. And that goes against the very fabric of our own conscience. I mean, we were not given free will and the ability to retain and bequeath knowledge for no freaking reason. We were given this gift of consciousness so that we can build upon our own knowledge and be able to conquer the obstacles that are here upon nature, that are here upon this realm. And I think that humanity, not humanity as a whole, but those in humanity that make the biggest leaps and strides, those within humanity that make the biggest contributions, and I'm talking about the capitalists. These are the individuals that helped catapult the technological revolution. These were the individuals that helped catapult the scientific revolution. And the only way that we're going to continue to sustain, to, to continue to sustain the growth of humanity is if we embrace the mechanism of humanity that has created heaven out of this hell. Because by God, this earth is hell. And if you don't believe me, why don't you take a look at nature itself? Why don't you take a look at every living organism on this planet? Every organism on this planet has to kill and eat another living organism to sustain itself, to survive. What kind of a Christian, pious, pearly white gates living in the clouds God would comprise and construct such a realm of such an evil nature? Do you understand that we have made heaven out of this hell, and it's because of capitalism. It's because of the idea that we get what we put in, and we get what we deserve. And for you idiots who are like, ah, this is boring, yeah, I don't get it. You want to know why it's boring? Because it's not fucking dancing with the stars, assholes. All right? It's not dancing with the stars. It's not American Idol. It's not Adam Lambert hopping around a stage with a hamster hanging out its ass. That's why you're bored, you stupid milky lickers. And that's right. I implemented chat martial law on all of you idiots. All right? I'm implementing chat martial law so you idiots, you don't even have the common decency to talk anymore. How do you like that, huh? How you like that? The only person that can see, ah, uh, this is boring, <laughs> is your stupid stinking ass. All right? <laughs> so how you like a little bit of that? As a matter of fact, let me go ahead and sip on this drink that I just poured for myself. For all you bored bastards, you're going to have to hear me sip on this goddamn Johnny Walker Blue Label. Love on the rocks! <laughs> ah. And since you idiots are bored, let me explain something else. I am not an advocate to, uh, I, I don't know, embrace humanity as a whole. I'm one who believes that not every human being is God's special little creature, like they like to preach in these uh, ridiculous theocracies and these political romantic ideas like collectivism. Do you understand? I don't believe that every stupid little human being is God's special creature. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've met my fair share of stupid human beings. As a matter of fact, if you haven't, why don't you go to a freaking supermarket and start putting steaks in your goddamn basket and watch how many ignorant-ass po people in America start looking at you like you just farted on their Sunday dress or something. Huh? Now I'll tell you that right now. This is, this is it right here. So I'm saying that we shouldn't have to be saving Wastes of human life. I think that we, are, by direct consequence, are killing ourselves by allowing so many useless eaters to walk the face of the planet. 
And if you don't believe me, take a look at America itself. These useless waste of human life that are sitting over here with their hands out waiting for Big Brother government to give them a loaf of bread are actually jeopardizing the civility of civilization itself. Now, I mean, just take a look at Britain, for Christ's sake. That's a perfect example of a socialist country that attempted to facilitate the continuity of every single human being that was in that country. And what did it do to itself? It did nothing but turn itself into an uncivil country, for Christ's sake. I mean, we saw the riots. We saw the goddamn devastation that happened there. I mean, these people are becoming a threat to our civility. And that's why I'm saying, folks, I'm not speaking for all of humanity, all right? I'm not speaking for all of humanity. I'm speaking for the capitalist and the capitalist only. And if you're not a capitalist, as far as I'm concerned, I think that social Darwinism should do away with your existence because you're only clouding the potential for those that actually want to contribute to this civilization, all right? Because that's who I support. I, I, I support those that actually want to contribute to civilization. I don't support these losers that just want to sit back and, yeah, I'm going to get my food card, baby. I'm going to get my food card, baby. I'm going to make all kinds of money off the government, baby. I ain't going to do nothing. I'm going to sit home all day and smoke motherfucking marijuana, baby, watch cartoons all day, baby. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. I'm sick of it. So all you assholes that are bored, well, you know, keep being bored, all right? Because now I'm going to give you a reason to be bored. Now I'm not going to take any calls. How about that, huh? <laughs> How about a little bit of that? How about if I take no freaking calls for the rest of the goddamn show? No calls. How about that? Hang up everybody, engineer. Hang up on everybody because I'm not taking no calls. Hang up on all of them. Hang up on all of them. The tired, Hang up on all of them. I'm not taking any more calls, and they're just going to have to sit here and listen to me talk. And that's what they're going to have to do. They want to be communists. They want to be leftists. They want to be jerk dicks. Huh? I'll give them a Fidel Castro session for them. Yeah, that's what Fidel Castro used to do. He would force his people to sit there and watch him speak for eight hours in the midst of them starving to death, in the midst of them wanting to go to sleep. No, you have to listen to stupid-ass Fidel Talk about, oh, viva la revolucion, shut up. So get, everybody, get off, get off my line, get off my goddamn uh, switchboard. I don't want to talk to nobody. All right, screw this. I'm not turning this goddamn broadcast into Fruit Bowl Wednesday. I'll be damned if that happens. I'll tell you that right goddamn now. I'm not going to sit over here and allow this to become Fruit Bowl Wednesday. You assholes want to sit over here and be cute, huh? Well, you're going to have to sit there and be bored all night. How do you like that, huh? How about that? You're going to have to be bored all night. How about if I do some karaoke, for Christ's sake? How about that? Let's do some karaoke. How about that, huh? you have to sit there and listen to me do karaoke, for Christ's sake. How about that? <laughs> hey, uh, engineer, find me some karaoke music, shall we? All right? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to do some karaoke you know, we're going to do something a little bit different because I'm not going to sit over here and continue this broadcast and continue to flatter a bunch of stupid, dumbass trolls that have no life, that make no contribution to society instead of flapping their fat Cheeto-stained fingers on the keyboard, talking a bunch of malarkey, and turning perfectly good food into shit. All right? That's all they're, that's all they're good for, for Christ's sake. So let me go ahead and take a swig of this damn, let me take a swig of this damn drink here. Ah. Good stuff, baby. I'll tell you, this is some good stuff right here. <laughs> oh, man. Let me, uh, I mean, are you looking for something, engineer? I want to force these idiots to listen to shit that they don't want to listen to. They want to mess with me. They want to mess with me. Well, they're going to have to sit there bored, for Christ's sake, huh? I'm bored. I'm bored. Wah, wah, wah. Well, sit there bored with Jack Marshall Law, playing with your own pecker shaft. Just sit there playing with your own pecker shaft, for Christ's sake, you stupid milky liquor. Good Lord. Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, man, I'm telling you, look at them, they're mad now, look at them. Look at them. They're mad now, baby. Well, you know what?
know what? Tough titty. How about that? Tough titty, you stupid, milky-looking piece of trash. You, you go ahead and, and blame these jerk dicks that think it's real cute to just sit back and, oh, I'm going to troll ghosts, I'm going to sit over there and make new voices, and I'm going to voice dog, man, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, too bad, all right? I, you know, look, people are saying, oh, well, a, a lot of people are going to stop listening now, ghost. Well, good! Well, good! I hope you still stop listening! I hope you get hit by trucks, for Christ's sake. I hope you take a long walk off a short pier. I hope you get cancer of a prick, you piece of garbage. Give me a freaking break. Anyway, who else we got? Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and let me, go, let me do some goddamn karaoke. These people are pissing me off. Hey, engineer, we got karaoke here. Put, you know what? Put on some, put on something that will make these idiots uh, you know, want to dance around. And uh, I don't know. They're all a bunch of entitlement-ridden losers anyway. So why don't you put on some marijuana music or something? I bet you their damn assholes will pucker there, huh? <laughs> huh? And I bet you their assholes will pucker there for Christ. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and throw something on right here. Go throw something on, engineer. Oh, this oh, hey, well, turn that off, engineer. The engineer, turn that shit off. What was that? What is that? Banjo? What is that? What the hell is that? Look, can you give me some songs here? I mean, these people, they, they say they're bored. All right, so I want to make them more bored. I want to do some goddamn karaoke. Do you understand what I'm saying there? All right, let's see what we got here, all right? Put something else on here. All right, let's see, let's see if we can make this happen, all right? And if for all those folks that are just getting in wondering what the hell's happening, I have implemented chat room martial law. I have implemented chat room martial law against those in here because they're flapping their fat Cheeto stained fingers thinking that they're doing something cute. They're bored, huh? I'm bored. Well, I'm going to give you a reason to be bored. I'm not taking any more callers. And we're gonna we're gonna we're just gonna sing karaoke. How about that? We're gonna be we're gonna be Japanese for today, huh? How about that? We're gonna be a little Japanese and do some goddamn karaoke for heaven's sake. <laughs> huh? How you like a little bit of that here, you milky licking pieces of nipple clamp loving butt plug up the ass looking wish that you had a goddamn life having pieces of nipple clamp loving butt plug up the ass looking chicken eating corn by crap? Huh? All right, let's go ahead and throw let's throw something on here, engineer, please. Let's throw something on here, please. Throw something. All right, here we go. Oh yeah. Oh man. Oh man. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I like this engineer. It's where it goes. I, I can hear this. Here it is. Here we go. Well, she grew up in an Indiana town, had a good-looking mama, never was around. And she grew up tall, and she grew up right with the Indiana boys on the Indiana nights. Put on that party dress, buy me a drink, 
sing me a song. Take me at the club because I can't stay long. Last dance with Mary Jane. One more time to kill the pain. Woo! Yeah! I feel summer sinking in and I'm tired of this town again. Thank you very much, folks. This is my band, Michael J. Fox and the Shakes. Hope you appreciate it, baby. We're out here in 6th Street, and we're touring all day long, baby. All night long. 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 There's pigeons now on Market Square. She's standing in her underwear, looking down from a hotel room. And nightfall will be coming soon. Oh, my, my. Oh, hell yes. You got to put on that party dress. It was too cold to ride, so I woke up alone. I hit the last number. I walked to the road. Last dance with Mary Jane. One more time to feel the pain. Woo! Yeah! I'm telling you, I feel summer creeping in and I... Tired of this town again. Woo! Is everybody bored? <laughs> Yee-haw! Woo! Man, they call me the nature boy. <laughs> Woo! That's what I'm talking about, baby. Michael J. Fox and the Shakes once again coming to a town near you, baby. <laughs> Woo! Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm getting down. Pick a bow wow. Barrel roll. Barrel roll. Barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. Do the barrel roll. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on the internet. I'm on the internet. I'm on the internet. Yep, 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 yep. I'm on the internet. Freaking magnets, man. How do they work? <laughs> Woo! I'm feeling good, man. Look at the, did everybody see the room clear out, huh? Now they realize, oh, man, I'm not going to be able to play that little audio program file that somebody else did to make me feel like I have some sort of significance in this earth. That I have some kind of significance? No, you don't have any kind of significance. <laughs> Woo! I'm having a good time here. I'm actually having a good time tonight, for Christ's sake. Let me go ahead and take a swig of this, for Christ's sake. <laughs> I mean, look at them. They're pissed, man. Let me tell you something. I'm looking at these assholes chatting. Because I'm the only one that can see their chat besides themselves, you know, because I am the eye in the sky looking at you, rocking me to mine. They're all saying, I hate you, asshole. I'm bored and meh, meh, meh. Well, tough titty, all right? <laughs> tough titty, you're just going to have to deal with it, all right? How about, you know, I'm having a pretty good time. Now, let's, let's, do, let's do another one. How about that? Let's do a goddamn another song here. Now, what, what song should I play here, for Christ's sake, huh? How about that? Uh, you know, let's, let's just do something here. Let's see if we can find another. Uh, do, we, do we have another song, uh, Engineer? The star, that's the star. All right, we're, we're looking for it here. Are, are you going to put one on, or what? what? What the hell is this? Why, why are you doing one of these? All right, he's going to try one more here. So let's go ahead and see what uh, what he has here, all right? What does he have? Uh-oh. 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 Everybody sing it. To drugs. Spain. We're made in Austin, Texas. We love, we hate all the socialist pricks, baby. Don't talk crap to me, cause I'm the OG ghost man. Oh, 
man. Don't you dumbass understand now? We're all stars now. In the ghost show, we're all stars now. In the ghost show, they like the pretty, the pretty ones. The ones that get you high. Woo-ha! They like the pretty, the pretty ones. That leave you low and blow your mind. We're all stars now. In the ghost show, we're all stars now. In the ghost show, they love you when you're on all the covers. When you're not, they will love another. They love you when you're on BTR now, but when you're not, they will love another. Oh, babe, I made in Austin, Texas. Don't talk shit. I'll run you over with my Lexus. Oh, damn. I'm so cool. I don't know, man. Oh. Uh. Uh, I'll slap your face, don't you understand? There's lots of pretty, pretty ones. The ones that get you high. <laughs> well, the pretty, the pretty ones that leave you low, that blow your mind. We're all stars now. In the ghost show, everybody, all stars now. In the ghost show, uh, uh, all the covers. All right, shut it up. Shut, shut the shit up. Shut it up. Are you all happy now? Huh? You want to continue doing this goddamn charade? You continue want to do this game for Christ's sake, huh? Huh? I'm bored. I'm bored. Are you still bored? I'll continue singing all night long. All right? I'll continue singing all night long. They're still bored. All right, let's continue singing. Let's continue singing, engineer. All right? Do you got something else? Because these assholes are starting to piss me off. All right, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue going because these assholes, I'm telling you right now, these assholes are, are really starting to piss me off, all right? They're really starting to piss me off. So we're going to continue going because they're bored, all right? So let's let's continue going because I'm bored. You know what? I don't care if you're bored. I don't care if you're bored. You're just going to have to take it, like it, and cheat it. All right, let's continue going, shall we? Hey, engineer, do you got something else on the horn here? Do you got something else? Uh oh. Uh oh. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, engineer, engineer, shut that off. That sounds like crap. That sounds like some garbage that. Uh, you know, this guy got an Esteban guitar and uh, electrified it and is actually making his own karaoke version of that song. Can you put on something else, please? That sounded horrible. Huh? The snow is again and yes, sir. All right, let's go ahead and do it again. Can we, can we, can we, get, a, can we get a part two, please? Can we do this one more time? I can't hear it, engineer. Can you turn the goddamn thing up for Christ's sake? God damn it, do your damn job for Christ's sake! We'll do it! It's bad enough that I got these assholes that are in here in this chat room trying to piss me off. You know, they're pissing me off. They're flapping their fat Dorito stain on fingers on the keyboard talking malarkey against me. All right, so let's do it one more time. Jesus Christ. Do it, engineer. Let's do it. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, wow, yeah. This is a song about Texas, baby.
wrong. Anyway, let's take some calls. Let's see if people are still bored here. Hey, uh, let's see. Grand Texas, are you bored? Texas sucks the Ah, shut up. Uh, how about Prometheus? You bored? No, I'm not. What's going on, Ghost? Happy Fruit Bowl uh, Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, you could, you're damn right it's a Fruit Bowl Wednesday. These guys are fruiting up in here, for Christ's sake. They're fruiting up. And I don't appreciate it one bit, for Christ's sake. I mean, they're fruiting up the joint, and I don't appreciate it. Jesus Christ. You know, I, I should I should, I should, should play another. Does anybody got any requests here? Because I, I'm not taking any more calls. Anybody got any requests? Huh? Anybody got any goddamn requests? Because I'm singing all night. I'm not taking any more goddamn calls. Let me have some more. Oh, man. Love on the rocks. Ha, <laughs> ha, Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. No, I'm not doing winter wrap-up, you freaking brownies. Christ, uh, you know, wh- wh- what else should I do? What, what else should I? What else should I be doing here? Huh? How about uh, how about some rap? You know, we got we got a bunch of brothers in here. You know, a bunch of uh, urban persuasion. Uh, let's go ahead and let's do some rap for Christ's sake. You know, I mean, we need some some rap area, anyway uh, because of the uh, the contingent in here. I know we got some brothers from another mother out here. So let's go ahead and do it. All right. Uh, hey, Engineer, do you got some rap beats? you got a rap beat that these people can, uh, you know, identify with? Because I know that there's a lot of individuals who not only listen to rap, but, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But who cares? <laughs> All right. You got something, Engineer? Waking up in the morning. Uh, uh, not, not yet, baby. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I got a little anxious there. Woo! Here we go. Uh, uh, here we go. Just waking up in the morning. Gotta thank God. I don't know, but today seemed kind of odd. No barking from the dog. No smog. And mama cook a breakfast with no hog. I got my grub on, but didn't dig out. Finally got a call from a girl I want to dig out. Hooked it up on later as I hit the dough. Thinking, will I live another 24? I gotta go, cause I got me a drop top. And if I hit the switch, I can make the ass drop. Had to stop on a red light. Looking in my mirror, not a jacker in sight. And everything is all right. I got a beat from Kim, and she can fuck all night. Called up the homies, and I'm, oh man, I'm, oh, God damn it, I messed up. I messed up, God damn it! I, I, I went ahead of myself. I went ahead of myself. As you can see, I'm not really a Ice Cube fan. I only like that song. I think Ice Cube's a fake ass studio gangster ass piece of crap. Uh, so since I let down my brothers, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, let, let's uh, let's let's look up another song here. Um, let's. Uh, I'm gonna do one more song here. All right. We'll do one more song. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see, let's see. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I know, I know, I know. Everybody just hold your horses there. Let's do this. All right, uh-oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Come on, come on, engineer. Uh, put some rap music on so these people can be like, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I could just imagine the, uh, the local hood rats in the hood listening to Ghost uh, bust a flow, for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, my God, Ghost. You're such a hottie. I mean, oh my god. I mean, you're such a gangster ass motherfucker. I mean, ah. So let's let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do this. All right, here we go. Here we go. What do we got? Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh. Uh. Everybody hear this? Uh oh. Here we go, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. When I met you last night, baby, when you opened up your gap, you thought that you could have me, but instead, I gave you a slap, uh, 
People in internet's talking crazy. But everybody knows that I am the man. These people out here bunch of pussies. Because they just don't understand. And I, I know I'm the fucking shiznit. Oh, yeah. And I know that I'm an internet underground man. Now, don't you understand that I'm an underground man treating me like I got a mic in my hand, man? Almost messed up on that lyric, but who gives a damn because everybody got to hear it. Even flow, everybody got to go. Everybody knows about the G-H-O-S-T. That'd be me, the O-G. Everybody treat me like I just shot a Kennedy. God damn, I can flow like it ain't shit. Everybody out there don't know who they messing with. Oh, you should have known by now. Everybody knows that I straight get rip rat or what I say rip wild. What? Well, I don't know what the hell I'm saying, but who gives a crap? Cause I ain't playing. I got a gun in my pocket. Talk shit to me. I pop your neck. Got a socket. Ugh. Yeah. I'm an OG, don't you see? You can't see me. I'm straight to G-H-O-S-T from the A-X-T. You should have known by now, see? Or should I say the G? Oh, that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm turning into a god. I'm, Jesus Christ. Turn it off, engineer. Jesus Christ, what am I doing? What am I turning black, for Christ's sake? I mean, what is? I thought this was a fruit bowl Wednesday. I'm turning black, for Christ's sake. I'm turning urban, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ. I mean, I, let me tell you something. I, I, I'm getting so into this urban feel that, you know, tonight I'm going to ask my wife to do the black guy handshake on my penis. All right? I mean, that's how into it I'm getting here. Anyway, who else we got? We got uh, area code 404. What's going on? You're on the horn. Hey, Ghost, I actually wanted to talk about the education system that you were talking about. Uh, well, I, you know, who cares? Nobody, nobody cares about that right now, man. I, I mean, you know, I would like to talk to you about the education system, but look at these milky liquors in this chat room. Look at the people that are listening into the broadcast. They don't care. They don't care! I mean, you know, I mean, we just finished talking about, you know, Jimmy Hoffa rabble-rousing a crowd with violent rhetoric, all right? I was going to talk about five dead in some Nevada IHOP after some Mexican goes postal and decides to kill a bunch of people out there. Did everybody hear about that? Some fat Mexican, uh, I don't know, I guess they didn't have a sale on bean and cheese or something at IHOP. Lo and behold, the guy goes in with an AK-47 and goes postal on the place. This asshole actually shoots People that are wearing uh, uniforms and they're National Guardsmen, five people dead at an IHOP, for Christ's sake. Jesus Christ, and look at these people don't care. Look at them, they don't give a crap. They don't give a crap. They want me to, you know, they want to continue on with that, uh, with this, with this, it ain't no fun if the homies can't have none. It ain't no fun if the homies can't have That's all they care about. Christ. Five dead after a fat Mexican goes postal out there at a Nevada IHOP. Unbelievable. All right? And not to mention, this is one of many incidences that are happening all over the country. Did you hear about that one asshole in New York? Or was it Chicago? One of those uh, disgusting metropolises. Uh, he actually went into a party and shot ten people dead single-handedly. Just shot them all. Just, you know, just went in there and said, yeah, man, break yourself, brother. Break yourself. And just started tapping people. I mean, that happened like a couple of days ago, for Christ's sake. I mean, you know, there are so many people, you know, be, becoming postal and going ballistic, and they're not being reported on the news. This is a phenomena, folks. And I talk about this on my broadcast about two years ago. I even blogged about it. You can even look it up on Google. It's called, uh, what, what, what did I name that goddamn blog? The Coming Loser Revolution. That's what I named it. And I think I wrote that in '09. The Coming Loser Revolution. Welcome to America. Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, we already talked about that fat Mexican that went in Nevada, went ape shit out there at a Nevada IHOP, killed five. I want to talk a little bit about what's going on in the international community, all right? Let's get back down to business. I, I know we went off keister there for a minute. I mean, there's people out there that are saying, oh, I'm bored, and yeah, 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 well, shove it up your ass. Anyway, I know we've been talking about Pakistan. You know, we've been talking about a lot of different unrest, a lot of killing, a lot of deaths happening in Pakistan. Today is no different. 24 dead, 84 wounded after a suicide bombing in Pakistan. Actually, it was dual suicide bombings. Uh, 24 dead, 84 wounded after suicide bombings in Pakistan kill a bunch of people. 
A bunch of people. And why are they doing this? Because Islamic fanatics want to take control of Pakistan. Islamic extremists want to take control of Pakistan. And this is very dangerous to America's national security and world's national security. Because Pakistan is a nuclear power. Pakistan is a nuclear power, for Christ's sake. And if you look on my uh, Twitter account, and of course the Twitter account to look at is Ghost Politics, all one word, no underscores, Ghost Politics. I actually tweeted about this particular uh, incident this morning, early, early this morning, about 4 or 5 in the morning this morning, uh, about 24 dead, 84 wounded in Pakistan, and I said that I would not be surprised if India gets hit up at the same time as Pakistan, because uh, I, I tweeted this goddamn Pakistan bombing, and it, it showed a, a complete and utter, uh, you know, mangled person being pulled from this, uh, you know, bombing area. And literally minutes after I announced that, another bombing kills 11 in New Delhi, India, injuring 65. And uh, let me tell you something right now. This is a powder keg waiting to happen for you folks that have been listening to my broadcast on a consistent basis. You know that I have been concerned about this individual bombing and this powder keg happening in Pakistan, for Christ's sake. Because if Pakistan goes under and falls to Islamic extremists, you better believe that they are going to launch a nuclear offensive towards India. Or, mind you, now that India got this horrific uh, terrorist attack on their home ground, I would expect a, a military offensive by India. I kid you not, folks. I mean, this is a very precarious situation happening out here. That's why I've been covering it. That's why I've been telling people about it, for Christ's sake, because this is serious business. It could jeopardize the national security of not only America, but the world, for Christ's sake. The world! And it just seems to me that nobody gives a crap. You know what I'm saying? I mean, once again, you know, simultaneous bombings out there in the India-Pakistan region. Uh, twin suicide bombings kill 24, 84 wounded in Pakistan. And bombings in India kill 11 and injure 65 in New Delhi. Unfreaking real. You know what I'm saying? Unfreaking real, for Christ's sake. I mean, this is world disorder! This is world disorder, and nobody cares, for Christ's sake! Jesus Christ! Oh, my God. Anyway, you know what? These, these people, look at them. They're, they're laughing. They're laughing. I'm saying people are dying all over the world. They're laughing. Implement chat martial law on these assholes. Implement chat martial law on these jerks. I'm not going to sit over here and laugh at people dying, you dumb, disrespectful scumbags. All right? Just for that, we're going to continue on. Let, let's... Let, let, let's continue singing, since all these assholes think it's a big uh, uh, fun and games to see people die for Christ's sake. Let's continue singing. How about that, huh? How about a little bit of that? <laughs> Woo! Here, let's uh, let's sing a nice good song here. How about a little nice good song? Uh, a little bit of a nice good song for the people out here, huh? That are laughing at people dying for Christ's sake. They're laughing at people that are that, that are dying in suicide bombings for Christ's sake. I mean, these sick, disgusting souls that think it's a big, funny j joke, you know? It's ridiculous. So I'm just going to implement chat martial law and just sing the rest of the, the, rest of the show, because these idiots are just acting like complete and utter jerks. And that's all there is to it, all right? That's all there is to it. Everybody who, you know, is, is pissed off because, oh, it's not fair, and you say it's not fair. You say, oh, well, tough titty, you know what I'm saying? Tough goddamn titty, you stupid, milky licking pieces of nipple clamp loving, wish that you had a life having trash. Let's go ahead and continue on singing, shall we there, engineer? Come on, let's, let's see what we got here. Let's see what we goddamn got, all right? Oh, yeah. Wrong, wrong verse. Me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. I've been around for a long, long year. So many a man's soul and faith. I was round when Jesus Christ had his moment and went down with pain. Made damn sure the pilot. Washed his hands and sealed his fate. Uh, pleased to meet you. 
Hope you guess my name. Uh. But what's puzzling you is the nature of my game. Yeah. I stuck around St. Petersburg when I saw it was a time for a change. I killed the czars and his ministers. Anastasia screamed in vain. I rode a tank, held a general's rank, when the blitzkrieg raged and the body stank. Pleased to meet you. Hope you guess my name. Oh, yeah. But what's fucking you is the nature of my game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I watch with glee while your kings and queens fought for ten decades for the god they made. I shouted out who killed the Kennedys when, after all, it was you and me. Let me please introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. And I laid traps for the troubadours who get killed before they reached Bombay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Hope you get my name. Oh, yeah. But what's puzzling you is the nature of my game. Oh, yeah. Oh, get down with me. Leaving it vulnerable in the region of the Middle East, folks, 
And in my personal opinion, and I've said this yesterday, and I'm going to continue to say this, uh, they are isolated, and, and this is ahead of this whole United Nations vote to make Palestine its own state based upon the pre-1967 borders. Uh, but they're finding themselves all alone in the Middle East, and I would not be surprised, folks. I would not be surprised, and I've made this prognostication, that Israel will pull off a military operation. They will exercise some kind of military uh, preemptive strike upon some belligerent Arab nation to not only uh, basically secure the co continuity of Israel throughout the region, but at the same time, they're having their own domestic unrest. I mean, 450,000 Israelis this past weekend took to the streets of Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, and all the other places in Israel to beg for socialism. Can you believe that? This is Israel! Israel's begging for socialism, for Christ's sake. I mean, good God! I mean, what is this world coming to when you've got Israelis... All right, begging for quote unquote social justice. And for you idiots that aren't familiar with that term social justice, that's socialism. They want more government money so that they can get more health care and get more food from the government and they can get housing assistance. This is socialism. And the Israelis went out and are begging for it, man. Read all about it. I mean, do a YouTube search for Christ's sake, man. I mean, good God. Jesus Christ, what a disgusting disgrace. I mean, Israel. Israel asking for socialism. Hey, good, good. Give me a drink. Give me a goddamn drink on that note. Ugh. I mean, I just can't believe it. Israel? Israel asking for socialism? I mean, good God. I mean, it's just horrible. Freaking horrible. Uh, anyway, what else? About? 801, you're on the horn. What do you think about Israel? Hey, this is Griffin J. Grifferson, and uh, I'm from Clinton, Texas, and I was looking back on some of your episodes, and uh, I saw you were talking bad about uh, cowboy poetry, and uh, out here in Nevada, we all listen to your show about this, and we all think it's defamation of character, and we all just kind of want to uh, maybe even, you know, press charges on you. Well, you know what? I tell you what. Go to court and take me to court and press charges on me, Mr. Cowboy Poetry Man. All right? I don't give a crap. I think that cowboy poetry is one of the most obnoxious government-funded ideas on the face of the planet. And if you don't like it, well, then go eat a, a you know, what, what, what do you call it, one of those horse turds? What do you call them, road apples? Get one of those road apples, get a nice, good, mushy one, and shove it right down your throat. Freaking cowboy poetry, for Christ's sake. Give me a freaking break. Who else do we got? We got 714. What do you have to say about Israel? Your pecker shaft, for Christ's sake. Take the, take the phone out of your anus. All right, 903, you're on the horn. What do you got to say? There, there we go. Once again, just a bunch of milky liquors. It's, it, yeah, you see, this is why I don't go and call on people, because people have nothing to freaking say, for Christ's sake. All right, nothing. Nothing to say. I mean, wh I mean, is somebody putting out an ad in, like, uh, a television show or in a newspaper saying some crap like, Hey, do you have absolutely nothing to say? Hey, are you a deaf mute? Well, then call 646-652-4869, for Christ's sake. I mean, give me a freaking break. Give me a goddamn break. Damn it! Damn it! I give you idiots the opportunity and you're just staying silent. You're a bunch of deaf mutes, for Christ's sake. You're a bunch of deaf mutes. Jesus Christ. Give me a drink. Give me my damn drink, engineer. I mean, I'm calling on you idiots. I'm even I'm even taking calls now, you know. I'm taking calls and you idiots are just being a bunch of goddamn deaf mutes, for Christ's sake. I mean, what is it with you idiots, man? What is it with you morons? I mean, do you live to make my life miserable? I mean, do you live to make my life a living hell? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, look at them. They're like, yes. Yeah. yeah, well, then screw you. Yeah. Give me the mic. Give me the gun. Give me the mic. Give me that 
goddamn mic. Look at them. They're saying, yeah, that's what I like to do. I like to sit there and make your life miserable. That's what I live for. That's what gives my pathetically anal, useless life some significance. That's it. I'm, I'm, I'm done with this crap. Put martial law once again. Put martial law once again in the goddamn chat room. Put martial law in there. I'm not going to sit over here and continue to take this type of ridicule, for Christ's sake. I'm not taking this ridicule. You're just going to have to sit there and shut it. That's what you're going to have to do. You have to sit there and not get any kind of goddamn chat feedback from ass clowns that are sitting in the chat room. Yeah. All right. Once again, let me go back, all right? Turkey expels all of its Israeli diplomats, basically cutting off ties from Israel. And now Israel is finding itself isolated ahead of the United Nations vote to make the Palestinian uh, little territory an actual state based upon the pre-1967 border. And I'm telling you, this right here, this right here is going to be very precarious as it relates to the uh, national order of uh, nations, if you will. I think this is a powder keg waiting to happen just as much as the Indian-Pakistan situation. You understand? Just as much as the England, uh, the, 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 the Pakistan-India situation, for Christ's sake. Good God! Oh, man, I'm just... I'm just... I'm, I'm sick. You know, I'm just... I'm sick of this crap. Anyway, let me move on to another subject matter. Did everybody hear that Eddie Murphy is going to actually uh, host the Oscars? I mean, not to get off on a side note here, but did everybody hear... Did they hear that Eddie Murphy is actually going to host the Oscars? Now, I don't like the Oscars. I think they're a bunch of, you know, disgusting, despicable uh, idiots that, you know, congregate once a year to have a liberal circle jerk on national TV. That's what I think that the Oscars are. Uh, But Eddie Murphy uh, hosting the Oscars. I mean, what was the last thing that Eddie Murphy ever did, for Christ's sake? Huh? I mean, what was the last thing that this guy ever did worth the crap, like 1989 or something, like, you know, Beverly Hills Cop 2 or something? I mean, Eddie Murphy, the last time I saw this guy, he was getting busted out there in Hollywood Boulevard in a goddamn car at 4 in the morning with a trans testicle. I mean, did everybody remember that? Uh, did everybody remember that? I mean, oh, man, oh, yeah, I'm serious. He, 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 that's, what, that's what happened, all right? This guy, what was it, about uh, 10 years ago, 9 years ago? That was the last time I heard of this stupid schmuck. This guy gets caught at 4 in the morning uh, in, you know, in his car somewhere with a goddamn tranny, and then he comes on Entertainment Tonight the next day saying, um, I, I was bored, and, and, and I was just trying to help people. And, and that's what I like to do. I like to go out, and I just like to give my money out for free. And, you know, I, I, just, I just like doing that. There was no kind of sexual relation happening. <laughs> There's no kind of sexual relation happening. I was just giving my money out. That's all I was doing. (laughs) Bullshit, Eddie. Come on. Why don't you just admit it? Just admit it that you were, you know, wanting to give, I don't know, a cornhole to a trans testicle prostitute at four in the morning in your car, then sitting here and trying to give this goddamn excuse that, um, I was just trying to be a good guy. I was trying to give out my money to people that needed it, for Christ's sake. And now we've got, uh, you know, precarious situation in a car with a trans testicle boy now actually going to host the Oscars. That's just great, isn't it? That, that's just great. Thanks a lot, Eddie Murphy. And you know what really pisses me off about Eddie Murphy? Uh, it, it, if you all remember a, a stand-up comedy uh, act by the name of Delirious, do you all remember when he put that out in 1981, 1982? In that, uh, and not only in Delirious, but in Eddie Murphy Raw also. You all need to check out those two little stand-up bits that this asshole did in the 80s. This guy had the audacity to call, uh, you know, homosexuals uh, faggots, you know? He had the audacity to do a joke one day, and I'm going to recant the joke uh, of what Eddie Murphy did, all right? Now, I'm paraphrasing this joke. This is not my joke. This is Eddie Murphy's joke, all right? Eddie Murphy goes, because remember, this was the 80s when uh, AIDS was real prevalent. It just kind of came out of nowhere, started killing people. Uh, He started talking about what he's really afraid of is uh, his girl hanging out with their friends, you know, they're gay friends, 
And then, uh, you know, they kiss their gay friends on the lips like, you know, goodbye or, you know, whatever. You know, they kiss their gay friends on the lips. Then they come back. You know, my girl comes back, kisses me. And then she's kissing you with that AIDS on their lips. You know? She's kissing you with that AIDS on her lips. And then here about six weeks from now, you're going to be in the doctor. And the doctor's going to tell you, the doctor's going to tell you um, sir, uh, you have AIDS. Well, that's impossible that I have AIDS. I'm not a homosexual. Sure, you're not a homosexual. <laughs> and I kid you not, that is the joke that Eddie Murphy said during, uh, what is it, Eddie Murphy Raw and Eddie Murphy Delirious. And then this asshole has the audacity to be caught in a damn car with a trans testicle after making, uh, you know, AIDS jokes and homosexual jokes and all this other nonsense. I mean, where are the homosexual community on that one, huh? Oh, I'll tell you where they're at. They're right here in my chat room agitating me instead of protesting something worth the crap for their uh, poop-shoot-loving cause. That's what they should be doing, for Christ's sake. I mean, this is a guy who's going to host the Oscars. Who is documented? You can look back. I'm sure they have uh, Eddie Murphy Raw and Eddie Murphy Delirious on YouTube somewhere. This idiot actually said these things, and now he gets caught with a you know trans testicle in his car, and and now he's just trying to evade. I mean, it's just nonsense. And I hate Eddie Murphy. I used to like Eddie Murphy. I'll be honest with you. I mean, everybody liked Eddie Murphy in the '80s. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, you weren't expecting that from a brother that looked like that. You know what you were expecting out of somebody who looks like Eddie Murphy? Somebody that sounds like Charlie Murphy. That's what you were expecting out of Eddie Murphy, but but it wasn't. I mean, Eddie Murphy was a nice guy. You know, he, he had himself a pretty good act going on. You know, trading places, Beverly Hills Cop. You know, I mean, he had some, he had some pretty good. Uh, uh, so there's some pretty good roles going on. And speaking of which, uh, Eddie Murphy was an actual talent. All right? I mean, you know, did you know that Eddie Murphy snuck into comedy clubs uh, to be a comedian at 15, 16 years old? And he was such a good comedian at 15, 16 years old sneaking into these goddamn comedy clubs that uh, Saturday Night Live actually picked him up to be a cast member on Saturday Night Live when he was 17 years old, baby. 17 years old. So that just goes to show you that this man had a lot really fast, and that's what's unfortunate about having a lot really fast. I mean, I guess you start uh, wanting to, uh, I don't know, uh, mess with freshly waxed poop shoots of trans testicles or something. I have no idea. Or play the flesh flute of, uh, you know, somebody that's dressed up in a cross-dressing outfit of some sort. I have no freaking idea. No freaking idea. Anyway, 646-652-4869 is the number to call here. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of callers, then I'm going to move on to another subject matter, and then we're going to go uh, to everybody's favorite part of the program, folks. And you know what time that is. Uh, but I, I want to hear from you. What do you think about Eddie Murphy here? I mean, yeah, this guy's a contradiction, right? I mean, it, it wasn't the Oscars making a big deal about somebody who was so-called homophobic one time. Did, does y'all remember that? Somebody who was so-called homophobic, they made a big deal about it. And here you got Eddie Murphy, you know, in the 80s was, uh, you know, talking about, you know, his woman kissing him with AIDS on her lips. And, you know, I mean, it's just it's disgusting, man. I want to hear from you. What do you think about Eddie Murphy? 646-652-4869. We got 718. What do you think about Eddie Murphy? Help me, pop. Help me, pop. Help me. Oh, shut it up your ass, you stupid idiot. 215. What do you think about Eddie Murphy? <laughs> Another another toy poodle. Great. Yeah. Uh, are y'all going to piss me off with that, huh? You're going to make your stupid little toy dogs bark to piss me off, for Christ's sake? I'm telling you, if you are a male, and if you have a sack, and you have a little toy poodle or a fucking schnauzer or, you know, some stupid little Yorkie or something, then you obviously need to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, am I a fruity ass? Should I be servicing glory holes? Should I be taking in the pooper? Because there should be no reason anybody with a sack has any kind of a toy little teacup dog, all right? Unless you've got a pink taco between your legs, you should not have a toy dog. Jesus Christ, who else have we got? We got Jamie Allen. Are you there, Jamie? Yeah, hey there, Ghost. How's it going? Yeah, good. Hey, listen, I, I've, I've seen on YouTube uh, literally tens, I think maybe even hundreds of videos of you openly explaining and talking about your racism and how racist you are. How, how do you justify this? That's totally wrong. 
shut up, you stupid French Alps living fruity ass little dumb ass bastard, all right? You know as well as I, Jamie, that those are splices, those are goddamn augmented audio files, and you know it, all right? If you want to see if I said anything really, go to blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, all right? Each one of my goddamn episodes are timed, dated, and stamped. And if you hear it on there, then I said it. And if you hear anything out here on YouTube videos or on websites, for Christ's sake, I mean, I don't know what the hell to tell you. These idiots are trying to make me look like a jerk dick. Jesus Christ. I'm not a racist, by the way, assholes. I know you idiots are trying to spread that around the Internet, for Christ's sake, but I am not a racist. I'm a melting pot of friendship. I'm a nice guy. God, you stupid sack of crap, man. Uh, make me sick, man. And uh, let me move on to another subject matter. I want to talk about John Stewart, too. And as a matter of fact, uh, I want to take this opportunity to introduce a new segment in the broadcast. That's right. I'm going to introduce a new segment in the broadcast called Twitter Bomb. Yeah, Twitter bomb. That's what I'm going to do. Now, for all you folks that are like, what? Twitter bomb? Well, I want everybody, you know, to start, uh, you know, cause a little havoc here on the internets since everybody likes to be Mr. Troll Bunny out here, right? Since everybody likes to be Mr. Troll Bunny and, you know, oh, I'm going to go out and get some lols and yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to Twitter bomb John Stewart's dumb, stupid, pathetically anal ass. All right? Here's his Twitter account right here. All right? And I want everybody out there to tweet this asshole and tell him that I'm calling him out. Right there. I'm calling him out. He is a useless, used up, wannabe comedian. I mean, I remember all the shows that they were trying to shove him down our throats in. You remember that? The John Stewart Show, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna put him in Kids in the Hall, and we're gonna put him in movies. We are gonna make sure that we shove John Stewart down your throats until you buy him, until you force feed to having him. And all right. So I tell you what I'm gonna do. I am going to uh, let me go to go to the Twitter account engineer. All right. All right. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to type in something right here. I'm going to put at John Stewart, and I'm going to say, The Capitalist Army is calling you out, you piece of crap. The Capitalist Army is calling you out for the fraudulent, for the fraudulent piece of milky-licking garbage that you are. All right? That's what I'm going to do. The Capitalist Army is calling you out. For the fraudulent piece of garbage that you are. Piece of crap. Sick of this goddamn John Stewart asshole. I mean, you know, Craig Kilborn used to be. I mean, you know, you're no Craig Kilborn asshole. Piece of garbage. Here, let me go ahead. Let's go ahead and tweet that, engineer. Let's go ahead and tweet that and make sure dumbass John Stewart gets it. All right? Make sure that stupid, dry witted, wannabe, uh, asshole uh, commentator, uh, some disgusting asshole that probably never even went to college, let alone knows what he's talking about. All right? Let's make sure that this asshole, uh, you know, gets this tweet. All right, there, engineer? I'm serious. Because I am sick of John Stewart. We are Twitter bombing his ass. All right? We are Twitter bombing his ass, and then I'm moving into radio graffiti, and that's all there is to it, all right? There it is, right there. All right? So, right now, if you want a shout out, and better yet, if you even want radio graffiti and shout outs to happen, then you'll do this Twitter bomb. If not, I'm closing the show right goddamn now. I kid you not, all right? I'm not joking. I'll, I'll, I'll stop the show, and I won't come back for, like, a year. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it really makes no difference to me. I don't give a crap, all right? I don't give a crap. I have nothing to lose here. I mean, it's no skin off my ass not coming into this broadcast. I'll tell you that 
right goddamn now. You understand that? No skin off my ass whatso goddamn ever. So that's all there is to it, all right? That's all there is to it. All right, now let me go ahead. Is, are, there, are there people retweeting the tweet there, engineer? All right, we got a couple of people, all right? Now what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm looking at John Stewart's little tweets, all right? I'm going to give a shout-out to people that are doing this right now. Jim9349, thanks a lot, man, for doing this, man. Niagara Roll, thanks for hooking it up. Thanks for sending that crap to John Stewart, huh? Thanks for sending that crap. Goodbye, Bo. Thanks for sending it, man. All right? Arthamello Plague, what's up, man? All right, Scented Markers, Moon Base. All right, I'm not joking. We're going to Twitter bomb this son of a bitch. All right, we got Gambagbo. We got RK Fox. We got Happy Radio 3000. We got Ghost R. Tim McGraw. I'm not Tim McGraw, asshole. Stop saying that. All right, we got, uh, you know, Soldier Leaf Hat. We got, got Raisin Bread. I'm not saying that other one. Who else? Who else is doing this to John Stewart out here? Who else? Who else? Issue three one three. We got Montreal Habs ninety six. All right, that's all they're doing. British Brian. I'm not joking, man. I mean, you know, this asshole needs to be. He needs to be called out. He needs to be called out, and he needs to be called out now. He is a useless individual. And there's actually people that go to John Stewart for actual news gathering. For actual information, for Christ's sake, and all he does is spit out nothing but a bunch of rhetorical nonsense that has no substance whatsoever. None. You know, this is a guy who thinks he's left wing of the political persuasion, damn near preaching socialism like Bill Maher, and yet these guys are living in back of million dollar mansions, you know? Such hypocrites. Such freaking hypocrites. You know, uh, oh, oh, yeah, I'm a leftist asshole. I'm a leftist asshole, but I'm going to talk my leftist socialism behind my pearly gates, behind my million-dollar mansions. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, yeah. Stupid, dumbass John Stewart, you piece of garbage. All right, let me, let me, let me get out some more shout-outs here, all right? Uh, let's see. Uh, hell, hell, bun, hell bronies. Uh, ghost loves bronies. I don't love bronies, asshole. Uh, who else we got? We got Have Dog. Uh, we got Lara Bonbon. We got, uh, I'm not going to say that, asshole. We got Niagara Roll again. We got Brutal Thunder Cunt. We got British Brian. We got Darth Poop Tickler. Who else do we got, Engineer? These people are tweeting right at Jon Stewart, and that's what he deserves. All right. Uh, we got Thomas Swift. Uh, we got O Gage or something. I don't know what the hell it is. Uh, NHL Tragedy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Here we go with these six sons of bitches. All right. Here we go with these six sons of bitches. Ah, good God. Give me a drink. They're, they're, they're making fun of tragedies, for Christ's sake. All right, that's about enough. That's about enough. All right, look, they're, they're making sick names, and they're throwing in a John Stewart. That's the last thing I need is for these sick names to get to John Stewart, and he gets all scared and starts calling the police, saying, Oh, uh, there's people named Poop Ticklers and, and Flamin' Nipple Chops and LOL Ryan Dunn that are tweeting me and harassing me. And speaking of which, folks, uh, I, I mean, I know that people follow me on Twitter and they go to some of these videos that I tweet. You know, they click on the video and they leave a lot of comments. I've been getting a lot of heat from... Uh, YouTube and, and, you know, individual channel owners stating that they don't appreciate me tweeting these videos because a lot of the users that come from my link uh, end up leaving a lot of uh, co comment graffiti is what they like to say. A bunch of, a bunch of comment graffiti, which is, you know, a bunch of foul mouth racial comments. Uh, and, and believe it or not, I've gotten a lot of crap for this. So look, the next time I tweet a video, please hold off on, you know, hey, ghost politics sent me here and, you know, he was right or, or this person's a piece of crap because ghost is uh, – don't say these things, all right? They're implicating me for telling you people to go out there and put these ridiculous sick comments, for Christ's sake. 
So stop it with the comment graffiti, all right? You're, you're making me in trouble here. All right, you're making me in I got a lot of people trying to contact me saying, um, your little following is harassing me, and I don't like it. I don't like it, and, and if you don't stop it, I'm going to have to call my lawyer. So please, all right, do not, if I tweet some kind of a little video of sorts, do not, I repeat, do not make references to me. Don't make any kind of goddamn comment graffiti. All right, don't do not do this, all right, because I don't appreciate it. I, I mean, for you to sit over here and make me look bad when all I'm trying to do is provide some commentary via Twitter, all right? I mean, that's all I'm doing is trying to provide some commentary via Twitter. I don't need, you know, a ghost politics from Twitter sent me here, and he's, and he's right, or, uh, uh, or this is a barrel roll, whatever you idiots are saying, for Christ's sake. All the racist, sexist, disgusting, foul-mouthed nonsense that you people have put on a lot of these channels out here that I have linked up to on my Twitter account. It's ridiculous. It's utterly ridiculous. It's what it is. It's it's disgusting. So please, you know, I hate to, you know, keep I hate to keep talking about this, but please stop. All right? Please. That's all I got to say. Whenever I tweet a video, don't leave any comment graffiti, all right? Don't. The only reason I tweet these videos is for your entertainment only. So don't sit over there and do this crap. All right. We got five minutes left, but, uh, you know, I'm pretty much tired of talking about things. So let's get right down to the nitty-gritty. Let's get a little bit of radiography. <laughs> hey, and before we get to radio graffiti, uh, let's do a couple of more shout-outs. Now, what I'm going to do is re I want everybody to retweet the first tweet right now. Retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account. And I will give you a shout-out right here, right now, right before Radio Graffiti starts, all right? So everybody go ahead and retweet the first tweet on my Twitter account. Let's start from the top. Uh, we got Brony News, uh, Ghost is McGraw, uh, DJ Thanatosis, uh, Drug Maid. Uh, who else we got? We got Pray Bronies Die, uh, USA Will Default. Ah, shove it up your ass, all right, asshole? Stupid milky liquors. Who else do we got, Engineer? Are people retweeting the first tweet on the Twitter account there? Sorry, yeah. All right, who else do we got? We got uh, uh, Poop Tickle Fish. Uh, we got uh, Trolesta Molest. We got Lara the Bonbon. Uh, Overtones of Levi. Uh, Aborted Fetus Jr. Uh, I Love Pony 612. Uh, who else we got? We got uh, Baby T-Lick. Uh, you disgusting, disgraceful... Di Just, that's gross, man! I mean, that's disgusting, man! What kind of cockamamie crap are you idiots coming out of your goddamn head with, for, for Christ's sake? Anyway, who else we got? We got, uh, we got Brony McGraw. We got Gyro Splatter. Uh, who else we got? We got, uh, Capitalist Brony. We got Ghetto Capitalist. Yeah, that's great. That's that's who I want to see right now. Ghetto Capitalist. That stupid EBT collecting pieces of, of dumbass government cheese eating garbage. Yeah, that's that's what I want. Yeah, just whatever. Who the hell else do we have? We got. Uh, I'm not going to say these are sick names. These are sick names, man. Anyway, British Brian in the place. Uh, who else we got? We got uh, M MJ Fox in the Shakes. Uh, we got Dubsters. Uh, who else we got? We got, um, oh, jeez, that's enough. That's, an, that's it for the damn shout-outs. That's it. That's it, Engineer. These guys are getting sick. They're getting twisted. I'm, I'm tired of it, and I'm sick of it. All right, folks. Now it's time for everybody's favorite time of the broadcast, and I'm talking about radio graffiti. And for you folks that are unfamiliar, all right? If you all are unfamiliar with Radio Graffiti, all you have to do is call me right now at 646-652-4869 is the number to call. And what I'm going to do is give you three to four seconds to say whatever it is on your mind. Make sure you're ready, you idiots, all right? I'm going to call your area code or I'm going to call your Skype name. Be ready to say whatever it is that you want to say for Radio Graffiti. Once again, give me a call, 646-652-4869. 
All right? And once I call your area code or Skype name, it's time for you to say whatever it is that's on your mind. All right? So let's go ahead and take it from the top. We got Prometheus God Tier, Radio Graffiti. Yeah, Ghost Wife. I hope she dies in the wildfires out in Texas so we can bury her. Yeah, well, you know, I would almost have gotten mad if you didn't sound so freaking faggy. Uh, Stop the Fire, Radio Graffiti. Hey, have you all heard Stop? He's a freaking yeah, we can't understand you either because your cheap ass internet connection. Note party, radio graffiti. I love you. Oh, Jesus Christ, take about ten steps away from my freaking butt crack. Uh, Matt Cook, six three one, radio graffiti. You know who gives a crap about my son? He's the fruity ass fruit bowl gay. Uh, you stupid sons of bitches. I'm telling you right now. You know you think that you're gonna get to me by talking about my family. You know that. Look, I, I, I'm going to I'm gonna be honest with you folks. I mean, I, I really got upset the last time you talk about my family, but I'm not going to get mad anymore, all right? I'm not going to get mad because I know that's what you dumbass finger spankers want. I know that you're, you know, putting a greasy thumb up your anal passage, you know, seeing if it feels weird up there, uh, trying to pull off these ridiculous insults against my family, but it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work, all right? Area code 520, Radio Graffiti. <laughs> Stupid idiot. Strap on. Radio Graffiti. I fuck my son. Every goddamn day of my life. Uh, ah, you sick damn. son of a bitch. I'm telling you this right now. Look, I'm not joking. I'm already taking, you know, necessary precautions so that I can take all these splices off YouTube. I'm, I'm kidding you not. I'm, I'm talking to YouTube now. And, you know, you better hope that you're not a partner with your little stupid YouTube channel because I'm going to make sure that I'm going to take it off completely. All right? If you don't believe me, you just watch these stupid little dumbass channels start going down, all right? And watch you idiots that have money in your stupid little dumbass YouTube accounts, all right? You just watch that be relinquished because you broke terms of service, all right? I'm, I'm not joking. I'm going to show you idiots. I'm going to show you idiots when you, when you got that, oh, man, I got $200 in my account. Yeah, I got $200 in my account. And then when I, you know, sit there and basically say, hey, uh, you're infringing upon my goddamn copyrights, and not only that, slandering me, and I also want more information about the Internet protocol address of the individuals responsible for this, because I'm going to get punitive damages out of their ass, you idiots aren't going to be uh, laughing then, all right? <laughs> you ain't going to be laughing then, baby. <laughs> Woo! Oh, man, I'm telling you that right now, baby. I am not. I'm not. I'm not joking. I'm not joking, baby. All right, I already talked to the to, to the right litigious parties, and they have advised me appropriately. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Anyway, let's see. Who else do we got here? Uh, uh, 215, Radio Graffiti. Taking too long, idiot. Two one five, radio graffiti. Yep, too 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 long, you idiot. Uh, who else we got going on? Uh, four eight uh, no seven three two, radio graffiti. I don't know who I'm <laughs> Now that was kind of racist there. Six zero three, radio graffiti. <laughs> Stupid toy dog assholes! What? What are all you little fruity ass bronies? Or you're gonna make your little fruity ass dogs bark to piss me off, huh? <coughs> that little weak ass bark for Christ's sake! How are you bronies proud that you got a little toy dog, you know, sitting there uh, uh, next to your little pansy fruit bowl over feminized asses? Is this what you're proud of? You're proud of this crap? Jesus Christ! Uh, 408 ra- or 480 radio graffiti. Hey ghost, uh, what what do you drink? I, I always hear you drinking. Uh, well, you know, well, to be honest with you, I'm a connoisseur, so I drink all kinds of stuff. I'm not, you know, one of these assholes who drinks the same Kentucky Fried Chicken piss every single day just to get loaded. All right? I mean, I drink a whole array of different libations and spirits, but particularly I like scotch and I like a little bit of Johnny Walker Blue Label. I love champagne. Uh, you know, when I'm not on the show, when I'm out there hopping on the town, uh, you know, living lavish out here in Austin, Texas. I'm popping bottles of Dom P or Moet, baby. You understand? Dom Perignon or Moet. That's all there is to it. I, I'll occasionally pop a bottle of Chrissy, 
but Chrissy is just a little bit too high priced, given the fact that it ain't as good of a champagne as like uh, Dom P. You know, Dom P is just excellent, baby. Just just enough smoothness with just the right amount of effervescence that makes the experience of consuming the spirit unbelievable, unfreaking believable. So once again, I'm a connoisseur, all right? I'm not like these assholes who, you know, uh, get one beer by, I don't know, some stupid two-bit little brewery company and drink that for about 40 years, all right? I mean, I'm a connoisseur. I, I, I drink all kinds of stuff. And not, not, not to mention, I only drink the best, all right? I don't drink the uh, rot gut, non-distilled properly, leaving uh, d- disgusting uh, toxin deposit in your damn liver type of nonsense. I don't I don't drink that crap. I drink the good stuff. Uh anyway, let's see who else we got. Nine oh three, radio graffiti. Taking too long, idiot. Nine one six, radio graffiti. Freaking bronies for Christ's sake. Seven one eight, radio graffiti. Because Texas sucks. All right? Tickle in their ass crack. You dumb idiot assholes. I'm warning you idiots, all right? I'm telling you right now, you better you better wipe those goddamn things off of your YouTube channel or I'm taking your ass down. All right? I'm telling you, I'm talking to YouTube, you idiots. You think that I'm lying. You think that I'm just BSing, for Christ's sake. YouTube doesn't appreciate you idiots slandering individuals. They don't appreciate you, you know, kind of... You know, putting things together and making it sound like somebody said something when they actually didn't, all right? And believe me, they're more than willing to give out any kind of Internet protocol information about any of the parties that are participating in this illegal activity. Because you need to look it up for yourself. It is illegal. It is illegal. So look it up for yourself. I'm warning you, idiots. You, you want to test me? By God, go ahead. See you in court. 217, Radio Graffiti. Want to get gay? Oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Uh, 919, Radio Graffiti. Mm, go, so I want it to you doggy style. No, nah, I think that you probably want to take it doggy style by the sound of that voice, for Christ's sake. Go ahead and say something again I'm, uh, so we can hear the overt fruitness once more time. I want to be in the back fucking you. See, that's what I figured. A, a stupid little fruit bowl voice. You remember, did you hear that in the second time? He was trying to make it sound more deep, more, more deep for Christ's sake. 508, Radio Graffiti. Sure, Palin is a good piece of ass. Ah, oh, you son of a bitch. I'm telling you, I'm warning all of you audio splicers. I'm warning all of you. I don't give two rats asses about that disgusting Eskimo bimbo Sarah Palin. I don't care. Stop audio splicing. I'm warning you. I'm warning you, goddammit. This piece of crap. 417, Radio Graffiti. Your son ate my asshole. Uh, I doubt it. I mean, not not sounding that faggy, for Christ's sake. I mean, what's up with it? I mean, if you're going to sit there and, and make these types of, uh, hey, I made your son do this and that, at least sound like a butch top, all right? At least sound like a butch top and not some asshole who bleaches their shit funnel. Because that's what half these idiots sound like. Half these idiots sound like they're doing anal bleaching right after the goddamn show, for Christ's sake. 712, Radio Graffiti. My fingers hurt. Well, shove them up your ass. 614, Radio Graffiti. Go to a three-way with Rick Perry. Oh, my. Jeez, are you in the tub? A distinct possibility, my good sir. Ah, Jesus Christ. Get this, idiot. It's calling me from the tub. Good God. Why would anybody listen to this show in the tub other than the fact that they, I don't know, are getting their anal passages puckered listening to some manly dominance being displayed on the True Capitalist radio broadcast? I mean, good God. 832, Radio Graffiti. Oh, you have to the ad, bitch. Uh, we can't hear you. You're coming in kind of low. Can you say that a little louder? We couldn't understand you. What did you say, 832? Fuck the ass. What? My. Oh my God! 
We can't understand you. I mean, you're coming in kind of stacked. Can you can you speak up a little louder? God damn it! This fucking game. What? You want to go game. play? Yes. What are you saying, you stupid half-witted stupid brat? Can you speak a little louder? We can't hear you. My mom is at PGI Fridays. Oh, Jesus, get this stupid kid. Get him off, for Christ's sake. Look, this kid is happy. This kid is happy that his mother is at TGI Fridays looking for a minority to give her the horizontal mambo. I mean, good God. Some eight-year-old kid, she, he's proud of her. He's proud of his disgusting, slut-bag, bad, period-smelling, sick-ass, salmon-smelling mother. I mean, good God. I don't know how much I can take this, man. I'm, I'm getting really, I mean, yeah, I'm getting really pissed off, you know? I don't know, I, I may just, I mean, uh, one more negative comment, I'm out of here. 201, Radio Graffiti. Fuck niggers and also socialism is death. Yeah! Did everybody hear that right there? Did everybody hear this? Huh? I mean, where are the parents, for Christ's sake? The parents should be pistol-whipped. The parents of these kids should be pistol-whipped, for Christ's sake. They should be neutered. They should be neutered, for Christ's sake. But you know what? There's no law against being a bad parent. Do you know that? Yeah, that's right. There's no law against being a bad parent. So these stupid, disgusting waste of human life are shitting out these children you know, and, you know, eight or nine by eight or nine different fathers, for Christ's sake, and they're not giving a crap. You know, they're dumping them off on an illegal alien child care provider or in front of a violent video game or in front of a boob tube, for Christ's sake. All right? I mean, it's ridiculous, these stupid little brats. Let me tell you something, you stupid little brats. Your mothers deserve a pimp slap from Ike Turner. Do you understand that? Uh, all of you kids that are sitting there with voices that obviously haven't gone through puberty... All right, I would, I, look, God, if you're listening, here, let's pray. Let us pray. Let us pray now. God, if you're listening. I know that you sent these wastes of human eight-year-old trash down here to Earth, and it's not their fault that they're pieces of trash. It's not their fault that they're foul-mouthed little brats. But, God, you cannot bless these single dishrag whore mothers that are trivializing life itself. You cannot continue to bless these disgusting single whore mothers that are trivializing life and hopping around from penis to penis to penis. You can no longer reward these disgusting, dirty, dishrag whores who dump their kids off in front of a violent video game or in front of a boob tube or in front of a goddamn illegal alien child care provider and continue to give them any kind of good fortune. So, God, if you're listening to me, please, if you know of a, and I'm sure you do, God, if you know of all these dirty dishrag whore single mothers that are completely neglecting their children, that are leaving their children at home, that are leaving their children with uh, God knows who, that are leaving their children vulnerable to uh, getting kidnapped, molested, and all the other dangerous things that could happen to these poor innocent children, I beg of you, God, to please, please, God, make sure that these skankasauruses, make sure that these dirty dishrag whores get punched right in the pussy. All right, please, God, they deserve it. They shouldn't be out here trivializing life. You know, they shouldn't be out here doing this nonsense, for Christ's sake. So, God, if you're listening, make sure that they get pistol whipped upside their stupid, obnoxious heads for trivializing life, shitting out children, and not taking care of them. All right, God, please, if you do that, uh, I'll be your best friend. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and get some more. Let's get some more callers here. Uh, Nine seven eight radio graffiti. Hey, can you just shove that eight bit shit up your ass, please? Uh, Two oh seven radio graffiti. Hey, if you're in Texas, you appreciate the smell of fresh. 
Uh, shut up, you idiot. All right, shut up! 508, Radio Graffiti. Here we go again. I'm saying a goddamn thing, for Christ's sake. Jamie Allen, what the hell do you want? Radio Graffiti. Uh, he's, he's, he's shoving the goddamn microphone in his uh, clogged up pooper. 619, Radio Graffiti. Oh, hey, it goes. My mom wants to talk to you. Yeah, well, uh, put that skankosaurus on the phone. I want to talk to that whore. Okay. Hey. All right, uh, put that stupid dumb vieja on the phone. I want to talk to that stupid tortilla flipping slut. Put her on. I'm, 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 hello, ghost. Hello, oh, my God. Hello, is this the guy on the radio? Christ. Oh, my God, this stupid dumb slut. Look, the bottom line is, you eight-year-old kids, I know that you don't have a cognitive realm of reasoning in your brain, but what you're participating in is utterly disgusting, and you need to blame your dirty dishrag whore mothers for leaving you alone. They should be reading to you. They should be taking you out to the freaking uh, Six Flags over Texas or something. Yeah, they should be taking you to freaking Disneyland. You know what I'm saying? They should be reading you, you know, uh, freaking uh, The Lion King, you know, and taking you out to see Shrek 12 or whatever the hell's out here now. You understand? But no. What are you doing? You're by yourself, all right? It's almost going to be 7 o'clock in, uh, in the central time zone here where I'm at, all right? So that means that as soon as you got home from school, whether you traveled from the bus, whether uh, some illegal alien dropped you off, whatever the case might be, all right, your mother has left you home alone for at least three to four hours, and then they wonder why these kids end up doing drugs. Then they wonder why these kids end up drinking. Then they wonder why these kids end up banging, end up pregnant. Then they wonder why this happens. You stupid, irresponsible parents. You disgusting, despicable idiots. I hate these stupid, disgusting parents that want so much props because, oh, look what I did. I shitted out a kid, and I deserve a holiday like Mother's Day and Father's Day. Yay for me. Give me a freaking break. Let me tell you something right now. If you shitted out a kid and you're out here making the excuse that the reason you can't get ahead is because your kids, well, that's your fucking fault. You stupid, dumb scumbag. I mean, why should we give two rats' asses about your dumbass kids? You're the one that made them. You're the one that shitted them out of your goddamn uterus hole. Why the hell should society have any kind of, I don't know, care in the world about the problems that you made? I'm getting about tired of this crap. Uh, yeah, what, what, is, what else do we got going on over here? 903, Radio Graffiti. I'm going to call you right back, all right? 903? Call his ass back, engineer. Call his ass back! I'm not joking. I'm collecting numbers now. Call his ass back! Stupid milky liquor. Seven four six nine two. You guess the last two digits. All right. All right. Everybody got that? Everybody got that? Nine zero three seven four six nine two. And if you want the last two numbers, go to the capitalistarmy dot com, and I'll give them to you there. All right. Stupid milky liquor. Dox this asshole, and make sure you, you make sure you send him twenty thousand pizzas to his goddamn address. Stupid asshole. That's it. I'm not going to do it. I'm, I'm done with this crap. That's what I am. done. I'm done with this crap. I don't, I, don't, I don't need this. I don't need this, man. Do you understand? I don't need this kind of nonsense. I don't need this crap. So I'm out of here. Engineer, get me the hell out of here. I don't even... You know what? You'll be lucky if I come back here tomorrow, all right? You'll be lucky. Get me out of here, engineer. I don't need to I don't need to put up with this crap. 
from these disgusting wastes of human life, these cyber vermin. And let me tell you something, all you assholes that are saying, oh, I want chat shout-outs, I want chat shout-outs, why don't you shout-out in your clogged-up pooper, asshole, all right? Oh, yeah, and by the way, check out this number, all right? I'm out of here. Long live the capitalist movement, baby. I'm out of here. You've been listening to True Capitalist Radio. The thoughts, views, ideas, comments, and opinions of the host of this show are absolutely his. Catch more live episodes Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30 Central. Or check out archive shows at blogtalkradio.com. True Capitalist Radio. That's it. Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere.